Welcome to Summersville Wildcats Live. Hey, Andy Earls here, your owner operator. I just want to say thank you for tuning in with us and for all of the support. This is the first year of SWL, and we are excited to bring it to you week in and week out. We also want to say thank you to all of our amazing sponsors that you're about to see and hear in this ad video. We'll be back live with the game action shortly, and we hope you enjoy this production. Go Wildcats! Hey, I love bringing you the SWL live streams in my spare time. But when I'm not here, I'm at Baldwin Chevrolet in Popper Bluff, Missouri. I have been selling cars for 15 years now and love the opportunity to earn your business. Four lots full of new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from. The majority of these are backed by a lifetime warranty at no charge to you. Come see me at Baldwin Chevrolet or call me directly at 501-413-9715. I look forward to seeing you. A big shout out to our primary sponsor, Security Bank of the Ozarks. They have five locations, six different 24-hour ATMs, offering mobile banking, online bill pay, mobile deposits, and much more. They also have a debit card fraud monitoring app that you can check your balance on, as well as many other functions. Visit them online at www.sbozarks.com. Security Bank of the Ozarks. Go Wildcats. Your primary sponsor, Current Incorporated out of West Plains, Missouri. Family owned and operated since 1990. They provide electrical, heating air services, and that's installation for both residential and commercial customers. Their electricians, gosh, they do anything from replacing a light bulb to completely wiring an entire commercial building. The HVAC department does anything from replacing an air filter to installing rooftop heating and air systems and full custom duct systems. They even have their own wireless high-speed internet in West Plains and surrounding areas. Current Inc. SWL's primary sponsor, Wendy's Canoe Rental. They have canoe, kayak, raft, and tube rentals for Jack's Fork and Current River. They're located at the south end of Highway 19 Bridge over Jack's Fork River. Get a hold of them toll free at 866-889-8177 or online www.wendyscanoe.com. Go Cats! All of us here at Summersville Wildcats Live want to give a big shout out to the beautiful Tuttle family and their company Tuttle Logging on their Wildcat sponsorship package for the 2021-2022 season. The Tuttle family is your local experts for all things logging and they want you to know that they are proud supporters of not only Summersville Wildcats Live but the city of Summersville. A big thank you again to the Tuttle family and their company Tuttle Logging. SWL wants to give a big thank you to Kathy's Creations out of Somerville, Missouri. In fact, Kathy's Creations is right on the square there in Somersville, and they have a plethora of different ways to serve you, like fabric work, quilting, silks, gift items, and much, much more. Kathy's Creations want to wish the Somerville Wildcats Athletics the best of luck on the upcoming season. Kathy's Creations, 417-331-6508. Go Cats! Hey, from everybody here at Summersville Wildcats Live, we're going to give a big shout out and a thank you to Mr. Brandon Brawley and all the fine folks there at Brawley Fertilizer and Lime Spreading on their Wildcat Package Sponsorship for the 2021-2022 live streaming season. Hey, if you need fertilizer and lime spreading, they are the place to go in this area. You can get a hold of them at 417-331-1753 and they want to wish the Summersville Wildcats nothing but the best of luck on the upcoming sports season. Our tour on the sponsor video makes a stop at Pineview Christian Home. We want to say thank you to Pineview Christian Home for the Wildcat sponsor package on the 2021-22 streaming season. It's a social service organization that's been in business since 1994, long-standing with great customer service, friendly staff, located at 4281 Highway 17 right there in Summersville. To get a hold of them, 417-932-4557. How about Triple T Logistics out of Summersville, Missouri? Thank you guys for your sponsorship. Hey, if you got any kind of logistical needs, no matter how big or small, pick up that phone and dial Jay and Sue Duncan, the owners, at 
1742. They're a family owned and operated business specializing in hauling flatbed freight in Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Tennessee. Triple T Logistics, go Wildcats. Under a minute. All right, guys, we are back here. Uh, we went down with just a few minutes left in the quarter, uh, in the second quarter. Uh, the score at halftime is 21 to 17. Uh, Bakersfield pulled or jumped out really fast early on. They closed the gap, or Summersville closed the gap. They jumped out again, and now Summersville's closed the gap. So we'll see, we'll see uh, if Summersville can continue to close the gap. Uh, or Spot if it's, on assessment. I do my best. <laughs> you do fine work, son. It will be Bakersfield ball to start off. Cook comes up immediately and tries to get a hand out there on Belt. Belt being guarded by Summers. Cook comes up, sets a trap. Ball goes between Massey's legs. And Tyler Berry comes back for Summersville. Summers now with the ball. Looks to go right. Cross-court pass is stolen away by Carey. Once again, another one of those passes. There was a carry. Yeah, he did. Carey yep. carried it. Yep. Two points for Bakersfield. Ball's ahead now. I believe he's going to be whistled for the travel. Yep. Clint yep. Barry was on top of that. Cook whistled for the travel. Two uh, pointless turnovers there to start the quarter. Yep. That's not what they drew up in the locker room. No. That's already a four-point swing right there. Summersville lost the two points. They gained two, so there's four. There is the Summersville Lady Wildcats take the locker room, as you'll see on the base. Well, you would have saw it on the baseline. Shot no good by Bean. Put back. Easy, easy put back by Jones is good, though. We have seen this, too, in the JV, in the JV games also. We've seen Summersville – have a close game at halftime and then just get blown out of the water in the second half. So yeah. that's another thing to watch for. A little turnaround jumper, no good by Fisher Russell. Braden Brawley will get in there though and get the and one play. Nineteen twenty five. Bakersfield with the lead. Russell had it, but Bean pulls it away from him. Braden Brawley's a kid that doesn't miss a whole lot of free throws. No. Belt with the fake there, gets it out to carry. Jones dumps it off, Massey drives. He's gonna be fouled by Russell. It's funny, you know, from this position you sat here as a fan, you sit there and watch the game, and then you see, you know, how slow everything is compared, you know. Mm -hmm. Girls is slower. JV is slower, and then you get the varsity. But as a commentator up here, man, it is hard to call sometimes. You get stuck in the, I guess, the ho-hum of it, the slowness. Yeah. Not taken away from the kids because they're, they're, you know, it's fun to watch. It's fun to call. It just makes it harder to do because you're used to going fast, and then all of a sudden it's just you hit this slow on both ends. Massey now with the jump shot. Massey's got the golden touch there from about 12, 14 foot out. Yeah, he does. That's his sixth or eighth point from a shot, you know, within that distance. Nice pass down to Jared Atchison up. He lowered the shoulder there, I believe. I don't know. There was a, there was a flop, too. Don't I get said me there wrong. There was a but flop, but he did lower his shoulder. You are right. No whistle, though. Two points for Atchison. Jones kicks it over Carey. He'll look to drive. Barry went for the steal, didn't get it. Jones kicks it down. Massey out to carry. 4-3 from up top. It's good. 30-21, nine-point lead now with three minutes and 25 seconds left in this third quarter. Summersville needs to get a bucket here and then get a stop on the other end. Three-point shot by Cook. No good. That's the highest arcing shot I've ever seen that kid shoot. Uh-huh. Yeah, his are usually pretty, pretty flat, bullet-like. It's like a... Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It's like a bullet going down to carry for another three. No good. Rebound Summers. And he's going to slowly bring it up. Now he'll speed it up. Ahead to Barry. Floater for Barry. In and out. No good. I mean, it's good. <laughs> oh, I told you. Tongue-tied, dude. 
getting all messed up. There's here. old Kathy Barnett watching. Bean up in traffic, no good. Cook will be fouled there on the rebound by Massey. Kathy, the head high school janitor here at Somersville, always on top of things. Keeps the gym, keeps the school looking really nice. Along with our main man, Adam. Oh, yeah. A man of, Adam, a man of many talents. A jack of all trades. Can't say that because he's good at all, all of them, I think. Barry now. Barry's guarded by number 22. He's just checked in, Alvarado. Ooh. It's going to be a turnover, blue ball. I think so. I think it, I mean, it definitely hit a blue jersey, but I think it may have hit Hayden Summers on the way out of bounds. Yeah, they called it that way, so. 23 to 30, seven-point lead. Speaking of Adam, there he is. What we got called here? I'm not real sure. They don't pay me to watch the game. <laughs> Still by Cook. Right hand layup on the left side is good. Baseball. And Belt comes right back at him, kicks it out. Bean, I thought he was going to shoot the three up top. Jones pull up from the free throw line is good. Nice shot there. We have Beverly Martindale watching from Kansas, I believe. Beverly, hope you guys are all feeling better. They've been sick the last week or two. Summers now cuts in. Floater, no good off the back of the rim. Belt comes back flying for Bakersfield. Left-hand side. Layup is good. Nine-point lead again. mentioned earlier you know Somersville does get a basket but then we don't get a stop and then we miss the next two or three possessions we got to have some stops in there Brawley goes all the way in up blocked by Hensley Alvarado now out to Jones he goes all the way in for a left hand Whoa. layup that was a weird does little Cook, thing he did there in the air does, does Cook have four or five or three or four fouls or what no that's the second time he's Should had two that's what I was thinking. That's the second time he's let, let a player go right by him. I believe you're going to see Cooper come in for him here. Timeout. Is that your phone? Bakersfield with the lead here, 36-25. 11 points. Summersville's been in this game the whole time. They have pulled ahead. This is the third time, and Summersville's made a run back at it. If they want to continue here, like I mentioned just a few minutes ago, they're going to have to get some buckets, but they're also going to have to do their job on the defensive end and get some stops. And part of that is going to be rebounding the ball and quit letting Bakersfield have two or three offensive rebounds. Sorry about that, guys. Way too many opportunities uh, to score. Summersville coming out the gate, only has four players as of now. There's Barry. So we have Barry, Cooper, Summers, Brawley, and Atchison. We have Carey, Hensley, Bean, Alvarado, and Jones for Bakersfield. They get it into Summers, drives, hands it off to Atchison, up, and it's good. Under a minute now. 27-36, nine-point lead. Here's where they really need to knuck, uh, knuckle down and get a stop on the defensive end. Hensley up, no good, rebound, pull back down. He'll put it back up for two. Atchison's going to have to get in there and get it on a uh, hand of the ball and hold on to it. Hensley very easily took that from him. Reach foul on Jones. We have Lake and Pfeiffer watching. Chad must be on the road or else Lake and somewhere else. Lakin's a Somerville alum, graduated last year, was a Lady Wildcat basketball player. She is greatly missed this year. Brawley gets it into Summers, 30 seconds left, third quarter. Bakersfield with the 11-point lead again. Cooper almost loses that one. He will throw that one away. Jones, right hand. Summer's only one between him and the basket. 4-2. Nice little uh, fake there. Oh, my gosh. Did you see that? 
No, I, the score jumped from five there. seconds. Hayden with the ball. Three point shot by Summers, no good. And it's gonna end the third quarter. 27-40. 27-40, 13 point lead. Highest lead of the game so far for Bakersfield. Summersville with the whole quarter to play, six minutes. Has plenty of time to get a stop here. Get back in the game, but like I mentioned earlier, like we've talked about, they have to get a stop. They have to get the rebounds. They cannot continue to let Bakersfield have second, third, fourth opportunities at scoring. Shy LaRae Richardson's watching. She is a teacher here at Summersville as well. Thanks for tuning in with us, Shy. As you can hear and see the, well, you could have, but Carson's over here sleeping. Summersville cheerleaders. As we talked about at the Big Springs Conference, they don't miss a game. If the boys, if the varsity boys are playing, it's a guaranteed that Summersville cheerleaders will be there doing their job. I believe coming out, it'll be Summersville ball, right? It will be, yes. Braden Brawley to inbound. Gets it into Cook. Cook up the left side with his right hand. Barry Let's tries to get it off in. to Russell. Yeah. Nice little hook shot there by Brawley for two. Very, very nice hook shot. I want to talk about Cook for a minute. I dog him. Like I said, I dog him whenever I see him. It's not just me being a jerk or anything like that. I'm picking at him. But the kid, I mean, he's not unstoppable. But, I mean, he's tough to guard. If he would if he would work on that left hand and add that to his, to his arsenal, he dude, could you're looking at a, you know, a three times better than what he is now. Being there with the still off the turnover. Oh, Fisher Russell's a big boy. Yeah, and he, he just bounced off of Bean. Did he? I he missed did. that part, yeah. Yeah, Fisher's one that usually comes in and knocks people around, but Bean's not a joke either. Guys, if you're watching tonight at any point, go ahead and leave us a comment. We got Jeremy Robertson watching again. But uh, leave us a comment who you're cheering for, you know, where you're at, where you're watching from. And I'll do my best to get it read off and give you a shout out on the air. I talk about it all the time. Some people don't care about that. Other people like to hear the name called out. And I'm more than happy to do it for you guys. Barry with the rebound there. And Summers will bring it up. 11 point lead again. Three point for Cook. No good. He shot that thing from Bakersfield. Holy smokes. Yep. And we didn't even have a player down there in position for a rebound. Jones off the bean. He'll power up. No good. And he's going to be fouled number, number four. four. I'm Braden Brawley. We have Katie Brook Lehman watching. Thanks for watching, Katie. After this game, it will be Summersville Varsity Girls versus Bakersville Girls. And then after that, to cap off the night, it will be varsity action on the boys' side of Summersville and Bakersfield. Bean's first free throw is good. He's smooth from the line. Bo Bean, that is. Massey, Bean, Alvarado, Jones, and Belt for Bakersfield. Summers, Barry, Cook, Cooper, Brawley in for Summersville. And an offensive rebound for Bakersfield. Bean with the ball again. Powers up and over Cooper for two. Four minutes, 25 seconds left, and now it's a 14-point ball game, and this is the largest lead of the night. Cooper or Cook is going to lose that off of his leg. Turnover again. Destiny Bryson, thank you for watching. Those are tough mistakes to swallow for a high school player, to yeah. dribble it off, very, off your knee like that. Yeah, that's tough for any player, but, you know, that's been the story of the night. We've had a lot of unforced turnovers and then just 
on the defensive end, we're not we're not locking it down. We're really honestly not blocking out at all. We're allowing them second, third, fourth opportunities to finally score two. So if they could lock it in, what is there, four minutes and something left? Yeah. If they could lock it in, I mean, no reason they can't come back in, but they're going to have to get the stops on the defensive end. Summersville cheerleaders are captain, Gracie Seelock, co-captain Emma German, uh, Haley Brawley, Jalen Halstead, Ellie Denton, Haley Mitchell, Alexis Boyer, Sydney Mahan, and Audrey Howe, and Alyssa Piper. Bakersfield ball. We're going to see full court pressure here by Summersville now. Alvarado gets the ball. Massey gets it easily broken there ahead to Belt. Left hand side up off the glass is good. Left hand layup with the right hand. Summer swings it into Brawley. He looks to drive, kicks it out. Summers will shoot that. It's good. Now get a stop. 14 point ball game. Ball's worked ahead to Belt. No stop there. He's going to get another two. Yeah, Bakersfield has gotten what they wanted in this quarter. Yep. 16 point lead now, largest of the night. Almost stolen away there by Jones. Summers with the ball now as we approach three minutes, 30 seconds. Cooper will shoot a deep three quick. No good. No rebounders whatsoever in the paint. And Jones comes back for Bakersfield. Belt, who scored the last two possessions, turns it over. Now we need to capitalize on this and then get another stop or two. Back to back, and we're right back in this game. Brawley. Offensive foul. Yep. That'll be his fifth, by the way. Yeah, he fouled out right there on that. But yeah, he definitely, you can see it from this angle, lowered the shoulder, gave the big knock. It was a nice shot, just didn't count. You got to be more aware of your foul situation, in my opinion, right there. Alvarado being pressured here by Cook and uh, Barry. Ball's worked ahead now to Jones. He'll pull up just inside the three. It's wow, good. that was nice a nice shot. shot. 49-31 with two minutes and 50 seconds left on the clock. Summer is struggling to get the ball up. No defense on him. Lost his handle there and couldn't recover it. Finally did get it. Now it's in the hand of Barry. Over to Summers. High looping pass. Now it's over to Cook. Back to Summers. He'll shoot it. Three-point shot for Summers is good. 34-49, 15-point ball game. Get a stop right here. Get a turnover. Yes, can Summers will make it a game here. Try to make it a game late. That's a travel. And that's a, a start. Yep, there's a start if we can capitalize on this one and then continue. No reason Summersville's not right back in this game. Summers now. He'll pull up. No good. That's not a good look. That's, nope. not a, that's not a very good shot to take. I mean, obviously, there's the upside if it goes in, and he is a good shooter, but at the same time, you can't be chucking up threes down 15. Right, under two minutes now. Over to Cook. He'll shoot it. Why? I mean, why? No idea. That could be four points. You could be down 11 right now as opposed to down by 15 yep. off of two stops, off of two quick stops. Belt swings it over. Alvarado. Alvarado, sorry. And Massey. Three-point shot there by number 11. No good. Number 11 is Wallington. Watlington. As you hear, Coach Aerosmith says, run your offense, White. Instead, we throw it away. Number 44 is also in for Osterkamp for Bakersfield. Summers almost gets a steal there. Alvarado brings it up. Alvarado had it there. Yeah. Belt gets it ahead. And he just went instead yep. of trying to spin. Osterkamp, nice pass into Hensley. He can't hold on to it. 
And Cook will bring it back for Summersville. If we come on a minute, no urgency at all. Wadlington got a hand on that one, knocked out of bounds. Hatchison back to Summers. Put back is good for Atchison. Nice rebound by him. 15 point game and he stepped on the at stepped on the out of bounds line. Another turnover. I mean, barring at this point with 44 seconds, what would be a miracle? This game is over, but a chance for Summersville to cut into it. Right. Shot's no good there. Russell with the rebound. And he will be tied up for a jump ball. I don't know. I thought for a minute maybe they called a foul. No, jump ball. Belt, nice drop by him to break the press by himself. He'll pull it back out. Three-point shot right there by Watlington is good. See the smile on that young man's face coming down the court. And we have Elizabeth Havens watching. Elizabeth, we miss you greatly here tonight. I know your team will too. Glad to see you're here watching with us. Summers, pull up shot, no good. Russell chases it down under two seconds now. He'll shoot the shot, no good. That's gonna end the game, 52-36. Bakersfield run off with it here in the fourth quarter. Next up is going to be the Summersville varsity girls versus the Bakerville, Bakersfield girls. This is a game that could be interesting because Bakersfield has been very up and down. They beat Van Buren at Van Buren, and, Dad, they didn't just beat them. Like, they beat them pretty good. They right. beat them by 12. Yeah. So uh, they handled them. But they also have some losses uh, that uh, get to some teams that aren't that good. Uh, if, if I'm being 100% candid, open, and honest. So right. um, it could be an interesting matchup. I'll just say that. Yep. Well, Summersville's in need of a victory. Not had one. What have we, we've only won, what, three games this year? Yeah, and two of them have been against Norwood. So they're in need of a victory. Uh, be, a good one tonight. Uh, be a good one to get tonight. Maybe get the ball rolling here at the end of the season. But we're going to go ahead and go to the ad video, guys. And when we come back, it will be – Girls varsity action here, Summersville uh, versus Bakersfield. Thank you, guys. Welcome to Summersville Wildcats Live. Hi, Andy Earls here, your owner operator. I just want to say thank you for tuning in with us and for all of the support. This is the first year of SWL, and we are excited to bring it to you week in and week out. We also want to say thank you to all of our amazing sponsors that you're about to see and hear in this ad video. We'll be back live with the game action shortly and we hope you enjoy this production. Go Wildcats. Hey, I love bringing you the SWL live streams in my spare time. But when I'm not here, I'm at Baldwin Chevrolet in Popper Bluff, Missouri. I have been selling cars for 15 years now and love the opportunity to earn your business. Four lots full of new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from. The majority of these are backed by a lifetime warranty at no charge to you. Come see me at Baldwin Chevrolet or call me directly at 501-413-9715. I look forward to seeing you. A big shout out to our primary sponsor, Security Bank of the Ozarks. They have five locations, six different 24-hour ATMs, offering mobile banking, online bill pay, mobile deposits, and much more. They also have a debit card fraud monitoring app that you can check your balance on as well as many other functions. Visit them online at www.sbozarks.com. Security maker of the Ozarks. Go Wildcats. Your primary sponsor, Current Incorporated out of West Plains, Missouri. Family owned and operated since 1990. They provide electrical, heating air services, and that's installation for both residential and commercial customers. They're electricians. Gosh, they do anything from replacing a light bulb to completely wiring an entire commercial building. The HVAC department does anything from replacing an air filter to installing rooftop heating and air systems and full custom duct systems. They even have their own wireless high-speed internet in West Plains and surrounding areas. Current Inc. 
SWL's primary sponsor, Wendy's Canoe Rental. They have canoe, kayak, raft, and tube rentals for Jack's Fork and Current River. They're located at the south end of Highway 19 Bridge over Jack's Fork River. Get a hold of them toll free at 866-889-8177 or online www.wendyscanoe.com. Go Cats! All of us here at Summersville Wildcats Live want to give a big shout out to the beautiful Tuttle family and their company Tuttle Logging on their Wildcat sponsorship package for the 2021-2022 season. The Tuttle family is your local experts for all things logging and they want you to know that they are proud supporters of not only Summersville Wildcats Live but the city of Summersville. Big thank you again to the Tuttle family and their company Tuttle Logging. SWL wants to give a big thank you to Kathy's Creations out of Somerville, Missouri. In fact, Kathy's Creations is right on the square there in Somersville, and they have a plethora of different ways to serve you, like fabric work, quilting, silks, gift items, and much, much more. Kathy's Creations want to wish the Somerville Wildcats Athletics the best of luck on the upcoming season. Kathy's Creations, 417-331-6508. Go Cats! Hey, from everybody here at Summersville Wildcats Live, we're going to give a big shout out and a thank you to Mr. Brandon Brawley and all the fine folks there at Brawley Fertilizer and Lime Spreading on their Wildcat Packet Sponsorship for the 2021-2022 live streaming season. Hey, if you need fertilizer and lime spreading, they are the place to go in this area. You can get a hold of them at 417-331-1753 and they want to wish the Summersville Wildcats nothing but the best of luck on the upcoming sports season. Our tour on the sponsor video makes a stop at Pineview Christian Home. We want to say thank you to Pineview Christian Home for the Wildcat sponsor package on the 2021-22 streaming season. It's a social service organization that's been in business since 1994, long-standing with great customer service, friendly staff, located at 4281 Highway 17 right there in Summersville. To get a hold of them, 417-932-4557. How about Triple T Logistics out of Summersville, Missouri? Thank you guys for your sponsorship. Hey, if you got any kind of logistical needs, no matter how big or small, pick up that phone and dial Jay and Sue Duncan, the owners, at 417-247-1742. They're a family-owned and operated business specializing in hauling flatbed freight in Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Tennessee. Triple T Logistics, go Wildcats. Summerville Wildcats Live is a Redline Media Lines company. Redline also operates the award-winning Corning Sports Report. That's Arkansas's number one viewed high school sports streaming company. Dogpack Media out of Van Buren and Alton Sports Network. Hey, if you or your high school would like information from Redline about live streaming an event near you, simply reach out to myself and your girls at 501-413-9715. Redline Media Lines, connect the world. Hey guys, listen up. If yourself, your group, or your business is looking for decals, well look no further. Drop Dead Decals is your one-stop shop for all things decals. Monograms of all sizes, colors and designs, fridge magnet decals, car decals, and anything else you can imagine. You guessed it, decal wise. Owner Head Eddie has great customer service and is eager to get going on your next decal project. Find them on Facebook and send them a message with your ideas, wants, and needs. Drop Dead Decals, go Wildcats. As we record this ad, the SWL Facebook page is up to 600 followers, and that's in less than one full month. It's pretty incredible considering the population in the Summersville city limits. Hey, we sincerely appreciate our loyal fan support of not only us, but these hardworking Wildcat and Lady Wildcat athletes. Let's keep that momentum going into the streaming season. Help us share these feeds and make sure to like and follow us. Let's go Wildcats. Hey guys, let's not forget that select SWL live streams will be seen on our Redline Media Lines YouTube channel this season. Watch on your big screen from the comfort of your home with a smart TV and the YouTube app. Just a few advantages 
over Facebook like pausing and rewinding live events, make sure to click that subscribe button to our Redline Media Lights YouTube channel. Let's go Wildcats. Redline, connect the world. Let's all go and subscribe to Summersville's own Austin Bradley's College Basketball Insider channel on YouTube. Austin and his passion and knowledge of college basketball shine through on this channel week in and week out. Speaking of week in and week out, weekly polls every week, bracket breakdowns, and much more analysis from Austin can be seen and even discussed on this channel by commenting with Austin on the chat feature each week. CBI with Austin Bradley. It is never too late to become a sponsor here with us at Summersville Wildcats Live. When you sponsor, you aren't just supporting the people who support Summersville Athletics. You're supporting these young men and women who work so hard and represent the Wildcats in a manner that we can all be proud of. If you have questions about becoming a sponsor, please feel free to contact us on Facebook and reach out to owner-operator Andy Earls at 501-413-9715. Let's go Wildcats. We want to say thank you to all of our sponsors from all of us at Summersville Wildcats Live. And we want to say thanks to you for sticking with us through this sponsor video. Hey, your live production, it'll be right back shortly. We want to say thank you to all of our sponsors from all of us at Summersville Wildcats Live. And we want to say thanks to you for sticking with us. All right, guys, we're back here for the Varsity Girls game. Uh, Bakersfield uh, Lions taking on the Summersville Wildcats here at Summersville. I want to go ahead and give a real quick shout out to the Hawkins family. Uh, you guys will notice that Elizabeth Havens is not here on the bench. Uh, Summersville has lost a great member of its community, Tom Hawkins, and he was laid to rest today. Devlin, I know you're watching or you will be. We do miss you. Our prayers are out for you guys and the rest of the family. We love you. I know the boys love you. I know the girls love you. Everybody here loves you. And we're, you're in our prayers. So Tom was a great man. He'll be missed by many. But I'm glad to see that you guys are watching with us. And Elizabeth, we know that you will be missed. Sorry I took that from you. I wanted to get that in before we started. but Oh, you're good, man. So starting the night for uh, the girls of Bakersfield will be number 12, Nautica Smith. Number 21, Summers. Number 32, Brashears. Number 34, C. And number 44, Callie Smith. For Summersville, I know you will have Emma German. Well, I'll just wait till they come out. I can read off their numbers. And now for your Summersville We're going to have number four, Addison Shockley. I thought she was out with a knee injury. Glad she's back. Yeah, for a while. I think they thought she may be done for the year. Yeah, number 12, Marissa Fisk. Number, number 22, Alyssa Piper. Number 23, Mason Gregory. Number one, Emma German. Here's the deal for Summersville. Summersville's capable of beating this Bakersfield team. I think they are. The problem is, is they struggle at times. They struggle at times to run a set offense. Um, they're going to have to do that. They can't get caught because, like I said. Is that accurate? No, that is not accurate. That All is right, a, guys, there is a uh, scam or something. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, Sasha it's. Kipo or something that says, do not click on that link. That is not us. If you're watching this. Please, this is the please link. do not click on that link. That's a that's a virus. It's gonna. Yeah. What in the world? So the ball was tipped and she just ran backwards. Didn't even try to get yeah, it. Yeah, she didn't jump for it or anything. Sorry about that, guys. The interruption there, but I don't want anybody clicking on some sort of spam, or spyware, whatever it is. Well, that's one of those. Uh, 
Fisk gets the ball stolen. One of those, as she tried to feed it to Gregory, go ahead. One of those situations that, I mean, if a player is just excessively taller, I understand that, but. They match up pretty evenly. Who knows, maybe they want to get a stop and a score. Right. Establish something. Yep, C got the ball over to Nautica Smith, and it's going to be out of bounds off Summersville. C looking to get it in. Fisk almost got a steal there. Ball goes back down to C. She goes to dump it in. Nice job by Mason Gregory to get around on that pass and slap it out of bounds. C once again to inbound. Austin Denton says it's been reported as spam. Thank you, Austin. Turnaround shot right there, no good. That was by Summers. And we're going to have a foul here on. It's going to be against Bakersfield or against Summersville. I'm sorry. And that will be on Emma German, number one. First one for her is no good. Second one, no good either. Rebound, pulled down, pulled down by Callie Smith. Ball's worked around now, back to Summers. See with the ball, Fisk on her. She gets it over to Callie Smith. Callie looks a nice spin move by her for the layup, foul, and no. Double dribble. Double dribble called by Doug Swan. I thought that was going to be an and one possibility, but it worked out better for us where it's a turnover. Full court pressure here by Bakersfield. Almost a turnover there by Marissa Fisk as number 34 C got her hands on the ball, but it did end up going out of bounds before they could get possession. Pfeiffer gets it into Fisk. Emma German now up to Pfeiffer. She'll shoot a three, no good. Rebound. Slapped out of bounds by Bakersfield, and it will remain Summersville ball. Piper looking to get it inbounded. Out to Fisk. Three for her. Got it's it. good. Three to zero with six minutes, 35 seconds left in the first quarter. C brings it across. Piper out on her. Summersville's matched up in a man, it looks like. Swing the ball over to Nautica Smith. Up for two, no good. Gregory pulls that rebound down. And we're gonna have a foul, I believe. Yep, foul on number 32, Brashear. And it will go to Summersville Ball. That is Brashear's first foul. Fisk tries to get it up, has it stolen away. Callie Smith shoots the easy layup after the steal. And we have a quick timeout here. As you can see in here, the Summersville cheerleaders there. I'm sitting here with uh, Facebook Live pulled up so that I can watch and see if there's any issues or anything like that and look over in Austin sitting here watching the, who is that, Arkansas? Arkansas and Auburn. Auburn. <laughs> yeah. Fisk now gets it to Shockley, back to Fisk, right side here of the court. She looks to dribble up straight to the corner. She gets through it. She's going to go in for a layup. It's good. That was a tough layup. Yeah, it was. She had a defender on her the whole way, actually laying on her a little bit. That's going to be a turnover. Goes back to Summersville. Piper will get it in. Fisk. She's guarded by Summers. Now over to Piper, who's guarded by Smith. Actually in a zone, but that's who's coming out on him. Fisk looks to drive, kicks it out. German, 4-3, left wing. It's wow. good. Eight to two with five minutes and 30 seconds. German almost had to steal there. Boy, she's right there on her. It's close to reach. 
And she slaps it away from Nautica Smith. Emma's played basketball for me for many years and I always called her my little bulldog because she was after it on the defensive end. I could tell her you're guarding this girl no matter what size, no matter how good. She said okay and she would do it. Rebound pulled away down by Emma. And Marissa Fisk comes up, kicks it over, almost had it stolen. Piper drives in, dumps it off. Team driver. Saved. And it will be Addison Shockley who comes up with it. Now she double pie. dribble right there. I can't I don't know if she did or not. That ball's gonna be out of bounds off of Marissa Fisk. So it will go back to Bakersfield. I think she did because instantly I thought she did, but I might be wrong. I thought she dribbled it, then picked it up, pivoted, and then dribbled again. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know, that happens a lot. I've oh, noticed yeah. that. And it doesn't get called. Well, whenever there's a lot of hecticness going on around it and there's a pause like that, you can get by with a lot. <laughs> Mason Gregory with the foul there. That sends C to the line, I believe. Yep, number 34, C. First one, no good for her. Second one, no good there. Rebound slapped out. Addison Shockley pulls it in. Marissa Fist now up the court for Summersville. Shockley, shot fake. Kicks it over. Gregory will shoot a three from the right corner. No good. Fisk with the rebound. Piper now brings it around up top. Set everything up. Zastro's in the game now. Sorry. I missed that a minute ago. Three-point shot three. by Piper is good. 11-2 to two now as we hit four minutes, ten seconds in this first quarter. But Zastro for Bakersfield has checked in also. Overthrows it. Yep. Brashear could not get a hand on that pass. It will be Summersville ball. And we're going to have a 30-second timeout, timeout by Bakersfield. Trying to figure it out. Officials for the night are the great Clint Berry, friend of ours. Doug Swan, another good ref. And... Nathan Sanders will round it out for the three of them. Also another solid ref. There's nights where you come into the gym and you see a certain ref or two or three walk in and you're like, oh, no, but this group here, solid group, happy to see them, happy to have them. Yeah, I, I get in trouble sometimes with that. <laughs> with the refs? Not with the, re not with the uh, refs themselves, more like the I'll see a ref and I'll go, oh, no, and they'll hear me. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little too verbal sometimes. Well, you come by it honestly. Fisk now over to Piper. I think Gregory forgot her spot in that offense right there. Aggravated Piper. She'll shoot a three. It's good. She's had, she has it. two. That's two for her. That is 14 to two now as we approach three minutes, 30 seconds in this first quarter. Emma German will be whistled for that as she tripped her. That'll be her second. And Jaden German, number 10, will check in for Summersville. Ball's inbounded to Smith. She kicks it over. C for three, no good. Piper with a nice block out and pulls that rebound in. And she'll bring it up right side of the court to Gregory and to Shockley. Shockley had four girls around her right there. Did you see that? Yeah. I didn't know if you was watching your college game or what. No, I was watching. It's going to be Summersville ball. Get it into Fisk. Back to Piper on the corner. She'll shoot another three. She's fouled from the three-point. Fouled on the three, so she's going to go to the line. She missed the bucket, but she will get three free throws here. Austin Denton says, good ball movement, ladies. That's what wins ball games. They are moving the ball rather well tonight. Typically, we've not seen a lot of good or not a lot of ball movement, period, by the girls' team here. 
first one's no good. Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's all hypothetical, but she doesn't get fouled there. She may hit that shot. Even with the foul, she almost hit it. Second one's good, yeah. And Riley Buttress will check in. Mason Gregory takes a seat. I'm going to say this about Riley. Man, the last few games, she's really come out and played really well. You'll see her a lot of, you know, a lot of hesitations. Third shot is good for Piper, so she hits two out of three, making it 16 to two, but she'll have a lot of hesitations. But she's always in the right spot. She's always doing the right thing. She's always blocking out. She works on this at home by herself. Back door right here, C, she'll go up. No good, gets her own rebound, and she's gonna be fouled by Shockley, who does not appreciate that call. But what I was saying about Buttress is that at home, she leaves a ball game and it's early with, uh, with light. She's out there shooting. She's out there working on this. She's out there working on that. And that's what it takes to make a really good player. She has that heart and that desire and that drive. C's first free throw is good. And now we're going to have substitutions for Bakersfield. Zimmer, number 35, is checked in along with Keith, number 10. C's second one is no good. Nice rebound there by number 10, Keith. They move the ball now, C. Back up to Smith. Smith for three is no good. Piper pulls that one in off the tip. She's going to let it clear out. Yep. Fisk on the right wing. Kicks it up top to Piper. She kicks it down to Jaden German. She drives in up, flat-footed. Misses, C pulls that rebound in, and now she's going to commit the foul out of aggravation. You got to go up strong with that. Uh, she drove in real nice, everything. Once she got to the uh, place she was going to take her shot, she was flat-footed. Your fiance is watching. That's that's wonderful. Keith with the ball now. Dump back down to Keith from C and, and one. one possibility here for Keith. We said that simultaneously. Yes, we did. We have Andy Earls tuning in from Pulin, Missouri. Is that how you say that? Yes, it is. I don't know where that's at, though. Three-point play is good by Keith. 16 to 6. Now she cuts it to 10 as we approach two minutes in this first quarter. Piper swings it down. German back up to Piper. Now Fisk with it up top, back to Piper. Almost has the ball stolen there by Smith. Into Shockley now. Fisk dumps it down to Buttress, and she gets it. Oh, had position to go in. German will shoot that, that's Jaden German's shot, no good. Ball slapped around, and Piper comes up with it. Dumps it down to Buttress. And we're gonna have a jump ball. Austin Denton's watching from Litchfield, Illinois. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your help earlier, Austin. Appreciate it. And Smith will bring it up. That's Nautica Smith. Now in the hands of C. She'll dump it down. Knocked away by Gregory. Fisk comes back. Nautica Smith on her. Layup is good for Marissa Fisk, making it 18 to six. Zimmer had good position there. Mason just read the pass and got to it first. Keith in the middle of the lane up. Floater is good. That was a tough shot by her. 10 point ball game again, under a minute now. Fisk will slowly bring it up for Summersville. Loose ball there is gonna go out of bounds in the favor of Summersville. Not a good pass, not a smart pass. Had two defenders right there on Piper and we, she tried to lob it into her. But it works out. Gregory now left wing, down to Fisk. Piper will get it and Fisk will now bring it around up top to set things back up with 30 seconds in this first half. 
out to Pfeiffer, down into Shockley. Shockley's yet to shoot the ball. And we will have a turnover there. And I believe Fisk got it back for Summersville. She did with 15 seconds. And she looks to drive, has it stolen away. C comes back, eight seconds. She's gonna have a right hand layup here at the end of the first, oh my goodness, misses that layup. And we're gonna have a jump ball with 2.6 seconds. And that favors Summersville. Callie Smith checks back in along with Brashear. Keith, Nautica Smith. Shot is no good at the buzzer. And Zimmer rounded it out for Bakersfield. Uh, here's, the, here's the key thing though for Summersville. We're up 10 points now, first quarter. We're going into the second. Summersville is notorious. I don't know what happens in the locker room at halftime, but they are notorious for playing a really good half. And then whatever happens is, or whatever is said in the locker room at halftime, they come out and it is just a totally different team and not in a good way. Yeah, they've, they've got to be able to uh, continue to control yeah, uh, this game into this quarter and into the next, but you saw they're kind of at the end of the first quarter even. You saw their their offensive ball movement rotation really kind of slow down. Yeah. Uh, they started to get into traps more. They started to, um, you know what I'm saying, turn the ball over. They were in jump ball situations more. Yeah, they weren't as strong with the ball as what they had been earlier on in the first quarter there. Uh, but what they need to do, what I was trying to say was the key is if they can get some more points up here that way and contain Bakersfield to just a few points, then they can come out. And if they do come out sluggish, then that they have a little bit of a buffer space. We don't want that to happen, but, you know, it's for the last two, three years, that's been the way. They'll play really good ball, and then they come out at halftime, and it's a totally different team. Both teams have received their warnings. It will be Bakersfield ball, and Brashear will be inbounding for them. She will be joined by both Smiths, Zimmer, and Keith. Summersville will start out with Buttress, Shockley, Gregory, Pfeiffer, and Fisk. Zimmer with the ball. Has it stolen away on the pass there, Fisk, and she's going to be fouled by Nautica Smith. Fisk will bring it up. Piper on the high left wing. Works it around, gets it down into Shockley. Not a good pass there, but Shockley reined it in. Now back to Piper. She'll shoot another three, no good. She's already got two for the night. And Callie Smith brings that one down and she'll bring it up the floor. Keith, four, three, no good. Brashear has it stripped away by Piper, and she's going to come back. Right-hand side of the court, slapped away by Callie Smith all the way up into the under her team's bench. Nice hustle play by her, and it will be Summersville ball under their own basket. Summersville's not running their inbounds play here. Buttress gets it into Shockley. She comes up under, no foul, so C brings it up for Bakersfield. I think Shockley was fouled there. She felt she was fouled there. Summers back to C as they move the ball over to Smith. Callie Smith goes up. She's going to be fouled by Buttress. Callie's first free throw, no good. Second one is good. Fess brings it up, middle of the court. Gets it up to Piper. 
Back to Fish, now to Piper. Piper should have took that shot in my opinion. She didn't have a player within 10, 12 foot of her. Sesk will bring it over to the left wing. Now bring it back up top. Down to Shockley. She kicks it out to Piper. Now to Fisk. Piper will get a right wing three point shot. No good. Ball will be slapped out of bounds. I believe there's going to be a, yep, there will be a foul called here, I believe, on Mason Gregory. That is who it's on, number 23, Mason Gregory. That should put him in the bonus. Okay. <coughs> Start to say that should put him in the bonus there. That is Mason's second. And Summers will go to the line for one and one. First one for her, rolls around no good, and Gregory pulls it down. Now Piper will bring it up. Piper looks to get it. Dumps it off to Gregory, power dribble goes up, and she's going to be fouled by C, and she will go to the line to shoot two. Mama Joe's watching, Joanne Ayers of Somerville, thanks for tuning in. No good on the first one for Gregory. Guys, as I mentioned earlier, go ahead and uh, let us know where you're watching from, who you're cheering for. Dustin Harrell says, Bakersfield girls coach was my coach in middle school. Right on. I feel bad for him. <laughs> I've coached against their coach. He's a solid guy, solid coach. We're going to have a loose ball foul here on Marissa Fisk. But yeah, Dustin, he's a, he's a good coach. Dustin's a good guy. I enjoy giving him crap. Dustin, eh. Not <laughs> a, he's not as good as the great Justin Harrell, but, you know, just kidding, Dustin. First one, no good there. You know, Dustin, had you been here, though, for this game, then you could have come up here and told us that in person instead of uh, on the live stream feed. Right, we might have just put you on the mic. Could have announced it to the world. But you're not here, so as usual. Fisk being guarded by Smith. Gets it over to German. Now down to Gregory in the right corner. She'll kick it out to Fisk. She'll shoot a three from up top. No good. And rebound belongs to C of Bakersfield. Gets it now over to Smith. Three-point shot. No good. Rebound comes to Zastro. No good shot. And Shockley will get the rebound. Deep Piper three by Piper. Deep three, yeah, no good. Rebounded by Nautica Smith. I'm sorry, Callie Smith. I believe they're sisters is what Coach told me down there. Or twins, maybe. No, they're not. I'm wrong. That's the Lunas. Fizz coming out with four minutes, 30 seconds here in the second quarter left. Piper tries to go up. She gets it. I don't think there was a charge there, but there was some contact for sure. Yeah, there was a foul in one way or the other. Well, I think the reason Bakersfield fans is hollering because Piper did throw her elbow out to try to clear the uh, clear the lane. Natalie McKee says they are sisters. Thank you, Natalie. I talked to three different coaches down there, so uh, I got a little confused. The Lunas on varsity, I believe, are on JV. They're twins, is what he said. I only see one Luna. I don't know. No, right here, Robbie Luna and Trace Luna. They're twins. Robbie and Trace. I got you. Got a foul on Mason Gregory. That's her third, sending C to the line. Oh, wow, that's three in the first half, is, which I guess that's what Braden Brawley had. 
first one for seed, no good. She's really struggled from the line this first half. And Gregory will take a seat and Buttress comes back in. But C's been to the line. I think this is her fourth time, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even fifth. But she, she struggled. I think she's hit two out of them so far. In and out again. Second one's no good. And Piper will bring it up for Summerfield. Now ahead to German, Emma German. She'll pull back. Gets it back up to Piper. Piper has it slapped away by Nautica Smith. And it's going to be out of bounds off her. Summerfield ball. Emma German now brings it around up top. Back to Piper. Now to Buttress up top. Piper on the right wing. Now Shockley kicks it down in the corner. Moves the ball really well to Piper for three. No good. And Callie Smith brings it up for Bakersfield. Guarded by Emma German. Kicks it out to Nautica. Nautica for three, no good. Rebound belongs to Brashear. Put back, no good. Gets a rebound again, up, no good. And that ball will be out of bounds off of Bakersfield. Uh, oh, my goodness. Callie Smith and Addison Shockley got tangled up there. Piper guarded by Nautica. Now over to German. Shockley in the corner. Ball is thrown away there, and we will have a jump ball. That will go in favor of Summersville. No. Yeah, it will. Piper looks to get it in to Fisk on the left wing. Shockley kicks it back up to Fisk. Three minutes, 15 seconds, second quarter. And we're going to have an offensive foul there on Fisk as she pushed off. Dustin Harrell says, Lansdowne was one of my favorite coaches I've ever had. Austin, <laughs> I'm at more games than I'm not. I enjoy watching the broadcast sometimes. Y'all do great. Dustin, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate the, the kind words. You know, we do what we can. I'm kind of handicapped sitting here beside him, but oof. Oh, that's tough. Just helping you out, Dustin, giving him a little bit back for you. No, I will say this for Summersville. Uh, the beautiful Kimberly Bradley's watching now, too. Um, Summersville boys varsity and junior varsity, Coach Justin Harrell, great family support. We've, we've talked about Nicole in the past, but you talk about Dustin. He's real supportive of Justin and of the boys, and he's at a lot, a lot of the games. Uh, that says a lot makes long distance drives after work everything to come see him and then you got uh nicole as i said she wears many different faces you know coach's wife team mom she's the clothes washer for the team she's the official bookkeeper at home games it's just anything and everything she can do she does so Who's that going to? Dustin. <laughs> Dustin, you're getting ready to get a message, buddy. Sorry, it's out of my control. I raised him the best I could. But, no, it, the Harrell family is a great family. We love them here at Summersville. The boys team are very blessed to have Justin and, and the rest of them. All right, we got C now being guarded by German. Kicks it over to Smith. They work the ball down to... Callie Smith, and she will go to the line to shoot two as she is fouled by Emma German, I believe. No, she's fouled by Riley Buttress. <laughs> Callie's free throw, no good. 19-9, 10 point ball game, under three minutes now. Shockley with the ball in the corner, back out to Fisk on their left wing, now to Piper. Down into Buttress, fumbles the ball. We're gonna have another jump ball, and this one will go in favor of Bakersfield. C being guarded by Emma German. 
Gets it over, nope. Gets it over to Smith on the back door. Jaden German come out and she will commit a quick foul there. As Nautica Smith drove, tried to drive in by her and she made contact. <coughs> that is two on Jaden German. First one for Smith is good. Second one, no good. Chased down by Callie Smith into Brashear, and she's going to be fouled by Jaden German again. That will be number three on Jaden, two of them within the last 10 seconds. Summersville with two players with three fouls. First one's no good. Second one for Brashear is no good. Fisk will bring it up left-hand side to the middle for Summersville. She gets it over to Jaden German. Now Emma. Back to Jaden. She gets it up to Marissa Fisk. Fisk gets it over to Piper on the left wing. Down into Shockley in the post. She goes up. She will be fouled by either Brashear or C. That one is going to go against Brashear. Shockley's first free throw is good. I'm out on the floor here. You just heard and saw the Summersville cheerleaders. Wish you quit slamming that around. My ears are taking a beat tonight. See, I think every fan on that side of the court that you can see is a Summersville fan. I don't see any Bakersfield people at all. There's some over there. I'm talking about on the side of the court that everybody can see. Oh, I got you. The bleachers. Second one is good for Shockley. Two for two there. 21 to 10, 11 point ball game. Two minutes, 10 seconds left in this second quarter. Nautica Smith with the ball. Emma German on her. She'll get it up to C. Over to Callie Smith. She kicks it down and back up. C. Callie doing some handles here. Up for two. Nice play right there by her. And we have number 13 in the game, Collins. Piper will bring it up. 21 to 12 with a minute 40 left in this second quarter. Nice handles right there by Callie Smith to get in and get the easy two. Emma German, right corner. I believe that's going to be a turnover. It is turnover on Emma German as she tried to force the ball through to Alyssa Piper with a defender on her. Some sort of confusion or something here on the floor. Or do we have a wet spill? Yeah, I just heard. Uh, <laughs> What did he say? I just heard Clint Berry said, yeah, it's all over the floor, floor over there. He said, did you not just see me do the barrel roll? I guess I missed it too if he really went down. Summersville Wildcats Live says, let's show some love to the Bradleys, Austin and Allen, for getting tonight's game in. Andy. Thank you. We are more than happy to call these games. Really enjoy it. Hope you all do too. The official was on the floor. Great recovery, Austin Denton says. How did we miss that? I don't know. I was watching the game. 
I will definitely go back and watch it tonight. Sorry, Clint, if you're listening later on tonight, I'm going to go back so I can laugh. <laughs> We're going to have a travel here on Callie Smith. Minute 20 left. Piper to inbound. Fisk will bring it up for Somerville as we approach minute 15, second quarter. Up and under for Shockley, no good. Putbacks, no good. Ball slapped around. On the floor is Nautica Smith. I believe she's going to be fouled. No, it's going to call a jump ball. I think Doug went down too right there. Did he? I believe. 21 to 12, minute four seconds left. Summersville ball in the second quarter. Smith playing really tight defense on Fisk, and she's going to ride her to the ground and be whistled for that one. A little bit of contact's okay, little bumps and all that, but you can't get on their back and ride them. 56.7 seconds left, 21 to 12. That is number two on Nautica Smith. What was the score at the end of the first? It was 18 to something. 18 to. 18 to eight, I believe. Chris will shoot two here. Or one and one, her first one is good, so now she will shoot two. Second one for Fisk is no good. And that's going to be number four on Jaden German. Wow. That's 3,000. Why, why is she still in the why, game? Yeah, that's a good question. To that's, get the fourth. Well, that's three fouls on her, and there was three minutes, I think, on the clock whenever she committed the second one. Then she got her third, and now her fourth. She should not have been in this game. C will shoot one, or nope, we are in the double bonus now. She will shoot two. First one rolls around, no good. Emily Carr will check in. Second one for C, no good. That's a nice block out there by Addison Shockley. Carr gets the rebound, thanks to Addison. To Fist now with 50 seconds. Well, when Addison did that block out, that opened the whole lane up there for Carr. Piper looks to drive in, up. She's going to be fouled on the shot, I believe. Nope, she's going to be called for the travel. C gets the ball in, bounded to Zastro. Now back to C. Left hand side of the court here for her. She'll swing it around to Collins. Now to Smith. Back into Collins. Almost stolen away. Collins kicks it out to Keith. Keith looks to drive over to Smith. Travel there. Will they call it? Yes, they will. And Summersville ball, 23.2 seconds. 10-point lead for Summersville, 22 to 12 in this second quarter. Fisk brings it towards the right. Up to Shockley. Has it deflected, but Shockley ends up with it. Now back over to German. Fisk. Looks to drive around. I think they're going to call that a foul. Yep. We're going to have a foul on C. That is her third with 5.6 seconds on the clock. That will send Emma Jer or Marissa Fisk to the line for two. First one is good. 23 to 12. Five points scored in the second quarter for Summersville, four for Bakersfield. Low scoring second quarter. Second free throw is good as well. 5.6 seconds on the clock. Zastro brings it up. He's it. No good. That's going to send us to the locker room at halftime. 24 to 12 with Summersville in the lead. Six points scored in this second quarter for Summersville and four points for Bakersfield. As I just mentioned, that is a low scoring quarter for both teams. Um, 
we're going to go ahead and take a break here. When we come back, it will be second half action of the Summersville versus Bakersfield girls game. Welcome to Summersville Wildcats Live. Hey, Andy Earls here, your owner operator. I just want to say thank you for tuning in with us and for all of the support. This is the first year of SWL, and we are excited to bring it to you week in and week out. We also want to say thank you to all of our amazing sponsors that you're about to see and hear in this ad video. We'll be back live with the game action shortly, and we hope you enjoy this production. Go Wildcats! Hey, I love bringing you the SWL live streams in my spare time. But when I'm not here, I'm at Baldwin Chevrolet in Popper Bluff, Missouri. I've been selling cars for 15 years now and love the opportunity to earn your business. Four lots full of new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from. The majority of these are backed by a lifetime warranty at no charge to you. Come see me at Baldwin Chevrolet or call me directly at 501-413-9715. I look forward to seeing you. A big shout out to our primary sponsor, Security Bank of the Ozarks. They have five locations, six different 24-hour ATMs, offering mobile banking, online bill pay, mobile deposits, and much more. They also have a debit card fraud monitoring app that you can check your balance on, as well as many other functions. Visit them online at www.sbozarks.com. Security Bank of the Ozarks. Go Wildcats. Your primary sponsor, Current Incorporated out of West Plains, Missouri. Family owned and operated since 1990. They provide electrical, heating air services, and that's installation for both residential and commercial customers. Their electricians, gosh, they do anything from replacing a light bulb to completely wiring an entire commercial building. The HVAC department does anything from replacing an air filter to installing rooftop heating and air systems and full custom duct systems. They even have their own wireless high-speed internet in West Plains and surrounding areas. Current Inc. SWL's primary sponsor, Wendy's Canoe Rental. They have canoe, kayak, raft, and tube rentals for Jack's Fork and Current River. They're located at the south end of Highway 19 Bridge over Jack's Fork River. Get a hold of them toll free at 866-889-8177 or online www.wendyscanoe.com. Go Cats! All of us here at Summersville Wildcats Live want to give a big shout out to the beautiful Tuttle family and their company Tuttle Logging on their Wildcat sponsorship package for the 2021-2022 season. The Tuttle family is your local experts for all things logging and they want you to know that they are proud supporters of not only Summersville Wildcats Live but the city of Summersville. Big thank you again to the Tuttle family and their company Tuttle Logging. SWL wants to give a big thank you to Kathy's Creations out of Somerville, Missouri. In fact, Kathy's Creations is right on the square there in Somersville, and they have a plethora of different ways to serve you, like fabric work, quilting, silks, gift items, and much, much more. Kathy's Creations want to wish the Somerville Wildcats Athletics the best of luck on the upcoming season. Kathy's Creations, 417-331-6508. Go Cats! Hey, from everybody here at Summersville Wildcats Live, we're going to give a big shout out and a thank you to Mr. Brandon Brawley and all the fine folks there at Brawley Fertilizer and Lime Spreading on their Wildcat Packet Sponsorship for the 2021-2022 live streaming season. Hey, if you need fertilizer and lime spreading, they are the place to go in this area. You can get a hold of them at 417-331-1753 and they want to wish the Summersville Wildcats nothing but the best of luck on the upcoming sports season. Our tour on the sponsor video makes a stop at Pineview Christian Home. We want to say thank you to Pineview Christian Home for the Wildcat sponsor package on the 2021-22 streaming season. It's a social service organization that's been in business since 1994, long-standing with great customer service, friendly staff, located at 4281 Highway 17 right there in Summersville. To get a hold of them, 417-932-4557. How about Triple T Logistics out of Summersville, Missouri? Thank you guys for your sponsorship. 
Hey, if you got any kind of logistical needs, no matter how big or small, pick up that phone and dial Jay and Sue Duncan, the owners, at 417-247-1742. They're a family-owned and operated business specializing in hauling flatbed freight in Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Tennessee. Triple T Logistics, go Wildcats. Somerville Wildcats Live is a Redline Media Lines company. Redline also operates the award-winning Corning Sports Report. That's Arkansas's number one viewed high school sports streaming company. Dog Pack Media out of Van Buren and Alton Sports Network. Hey, if you or your high school would like information from Redline about live streaming an event near you, simply reach out to myself and your girls at 501-413-9715. Redline Media Lines, connect the world. Hey guys, listen up. If yourself, your group, or your business is looking for decals, well, look no further. Drop Dead Decals is your one-stop shop for all things decals. Monograms of all sizes, colors and designs, fridge magnet decals, car decals, and anything else you can imagine. You guessed it, decal-wise. Owner Head Eddie has great customer service and is eager to get going on your next decal project. Find them on Facebook and send them a message with your ideas, wants, and needs. Drop Dead Decals. Go Wildcats. As we record this ad, the SWL Facebook page is up to 600 followers, and that's in less than one full month. It's pretty incredible considering the population in the Summersville city limits. Hey, we sincerely appreciate our loyal fan support of not only us, but these hardworking Wildcat and Lady Wildcat athletes. Let's keep that momentum going into the streaming season. Help us share these feeds and make sure to like and follow us. Let's go Wildcats. Hey guys, let's not forget that select SWL live streams will be seen on our Redline Media Lines YouTube channel this season. Watch on your big screen from the comfort of your home with a smart TV and the YouTube app. Just a few advantages over Facebook like pausing and rewinding live events. Make sure to click that subscribe button to our Redline Media Lines YouTube channel. Let's go Wildcats. Redline, connect the world. Let's all go and subscribe to Summersville's own Austin Bradley's College Basketball Insider channel on YouTube. Austin and his passion and knowledge of college basketball shine through on this channel week in and week out. Speaking of week in and week out, weekly polls every week, bracket breakdowns, and much more analysis from Austin can be seen and even discussed on this channel by commenting with Austin on the chat feature each week. CBI with Austin Bradley. It is never too late to become a sponsor here with us at Summersville Wildcats Live. When you sponsor, you aren't just supporting the people who support Summersville Athletics. You're supporting these young men and women who work so hard and represent the Wildcats in a manner that we can all be proud of. If you have questions about becoming a sponsor, please feel free to contact us on Facebook and reach out to owner-operator Andy Earls at 501-413-9715. Let's go Wildcats. We want to say thank you to all of our sponsors from all of us at Summersville Wildcats Live. And we want to say thanks to you for sticking with us through this sponsor video. Hey, your live production, it'll be right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your second quarter or second half action of the Bakersfield girls versus Summersville girls. Summersville leads 24 to 12 in a game that has been very, very slow as far as the paces went, but Summersville shot the ball well, played defense uh, for the most part pretty well, and gotten quite a few steals or for forced turnovers but as we mentioned earlier this is a team that for the past three years or so every time they come out of the locker room at halftime they uh, every time they come out of the locker room at halftime after halftime don't know what's been said or what's done happened down there but they they're a totally different team so we're hoping that this time here they can shake that come out keep the pressure up and get a W for the night 
Agreed. I'm out of breath. Score is 24-12. Austin has it 22-12. Out of breath, my blood pressure is low, so that's fun. All right, Smith will inbound for Bakersfield. She'll get it to C. Piper on her, nice defense by Alyssa Piper. C goes up, no call there. Whoa. And Shockley comes up slowly. Piper, pressure here by Bakersfield, works well. Fisk gets it ahead. Gregory drives up, no good. Shockley pulls it down, goes up. She will be fouled on the putback. Or no, I think they said it was on the floor. So it will be Summersville ball underneath their own basket. Piper will inbound. Gets it into German now over to Gregory. Gregory looks to drive up, floater, no good. Pulled down her own rebound, put back is no good either. And we're going to have a loose ball that goes out of bounds. Off of Summersville will be Bakersfield ball. C will inbound to Nautica Smith. Both teams started this half with uh, all five starters. Nautica now. Top of the key, looks to drive, kicks it out. Brashear will shoot from the baseline. Good shot by her. 15-foot jump shot for her falls. 24-14, 10-point game as we approach seven minutes. Fisk, guarded by Nautica. Down into Shockley, guarded by Brashear. Fisk, quick three for her, no good. Nice job by Emma German to come in from behind and get the steal. Kicks it up. Piper, 4-3. No good. Whoa, way, way off. Well, uh, Marissa Fist shot a real quick three, airballed it, and then Piper on the same possession airballed another three. Emma German working her, working her tail off and getting the steal there. Nice job for her. Let's see, brings it up. Now to Nautica, over to Brashear. Another shot for Brashear, it's good, same spot. Maybe a little further out, but that's two quick buckets for her, 16-24. Eight point lead. Fisk, guarded by Smith, dumps it off to Shockley. She has it stolen away by C. Ahead to Smith, Nautica Smith for a left hand layup is good. 18-24, six-point game now. And it will be a timeout for Summersville, and this is exactly what we just talked about. Summersville comes out of the locker room third quarter and does not look like the same team that went into the locker room. Well, they didn't come out of the locker room to what, probably a minute? Maybe less than that? Yeah, I think it was right at a minute. Uh, that's another thing, man. We'll, they'll, they'll go to the locker room every time, be up by 30, and then end up losing the game, and they're down in the locker room. That's what I'm saying. Nobody knows. Some, what's sometimes said, it's what's okay done. to go down and, and just say, hey, "Keep doing what you're doing," you know, yep. and leave it at that. Yep. I agree 100%. So let's see what they can do coming out of this uh, timeout. Six-point lead now. With at one point was a 14-point lead. Bakersfield on a bit of a run here. 6-0 run, I do believe. Fisk will bring it up. Now to Piper on the right wing. Gregory had good position there. She should have got it to her. Fisk again. I'll tell you, it's pretty full, but it's not as full as it has been in, in, in some games. Yeah, well, neither school had school today, so. We're going to have a foul right there on number 21, Summers. A little bit of a push, but, yeah, neither school had uh, – uh, was in session today, so that could uh, play a big factor in it. For Summersville, there's a large group of people missing due to uh, a couple of losses of some great men in this community. Nice drive right there. Charge called on Mason Gregory. Is that her fourth or fifth? Fourth, I believe. Huh. 
Clint Berry calls a charge right there on Gregory. I thought it was a good drive, honestly. It's a fourth. Fourth foul for her. Four fouls for Jaden German as well. Uh, Somersville bench continues to get shorter. C now brings it up. Emma German comes out to meet her. Callie Smith dumps it into Nautica. Turn around. She'll bring it back out. Up to C. Over to Callie. Piper on Callie. Nice defense there by Piper working her tail off. Out to Nautica. 4-3. Quick three. It's good. Uh-oh. And now we have a three-point ball game with five minutes left in this third quarter. A game that Summersville was leading 18-8 at the end of the first quarter. They've scored six points since then. Yeah. That is going to be Summersville ball. Talk to Clint Berry at halftime. He says, he says, I bet you guys got a good laugh. <laughs> I hate that I missed it. I'm going to go back and watch it just for that alone. <laughs> Bakersfield ball, three-point lead still. Four minutes, 40 seconds. Third quarter. German comes out to meet C. Right wing here. Nice defense by Emma German. Kick the ball around. Going to have a ooh. It's going to be a foul on Callie Smith as she took uh, Marissa Fist to the ground. Almost looked like a spear. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. She spared her. Oh, come on now. Cover. <laughs> oh, that's the wrestling fan in Austin coming out, guys. I apologize. Oof. I tried to raise him better. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Piper on the right wing now. Looks to drive. Splits the defense. Goes up. Got her own rebound, stripped away by C. She's going to come back the other way for Bakersfield. Left hand guarded by German. Kicks it over to, oh, going to be and one possibility there for Nautica Smith. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Half of my basketball team, my little fourth graders I coach, half of them's already here tonight. I'm liking it. Can't see it, but on the other end of the court, Summersville varsity boys are headed to the locker room. Take to the locker Three-point play by Nautica Smith is complete as she hits a free throw. There was a – we, we talked about it on the way home. Uh, Norwood went to Springfield and beat Webb City last yeah, night. Yeah, they did. Played a dang good game. Just about blew a big lead. Uh they went into halftime. Oh, up. and one possibility there for Addison Shockley as she got her own rebound and was fouled on the way back up. Sorry to cut you off there. They went into uh, halftime up 14. Uh, Webb City did cut it all the way down to one at one point, uh, but pulled back up one by five. Yeah. Uh, Garrett DeVault had another pretty good, pretty great game for Norwood. Uh, can't complete the three-point play there. Misses her free throw. We're going to have a timeout, Bakersfield. How many points did he have? I don't know the exact amount, but I know he was at – I would say he probably closed in on or broke that scoring record they've been talking about. So He should have been in the low to mid-20s on needing to go ahead and break the record, you know. 20 to 25 points, somewhere like that. If I, can, I can't remember how much he scored on Saturday because he was 47 away at that point. And then he scored 20-something Saturday. But, yeah, Garrett DeVault, top player, tough player. I'm excited to finally get to see some varsity basketball again. You know it for Summersville? Yeah, it's been 10 days. Uh, talked to Coach Harrell at halftime. He said they've only practiced twice. He said because, you know, snow. And then he said, I gave him a couple days off not thinking about the snow. Right. After the uh, um, conference tournament, he said, then it snows. He said, so there's yeah. two or three days. I, he said he didn't remember exactly that he couldn't practice. Well, he gave him days off. And remember, we got to Gainesville two hours early, and they was having a full-blown two-hour practice before they faced Norwood. Oh, yeah. that that. But I'll tell you what, that may have been the reason that game was so close. Could have been those boys might have been tired, but I mean, Coach Jenkins knows his 
knows his stuff, so he knows his players. But we'll pick it back up here. Ball down into Keith. Turn around. Nice post play by her. Put back is no good by Brashear. Piper pulls that one down. Has it stripped away, and Keith gets position up for two. It's good. And now we have a tie ball game. At Keith, I'm not sure why she doesn't play as much as some of the others because that girl is a worker, and she's going to be a good player. She already is a good player, fun to watch. Piper, in the left wing down to German, left corner. She'll bring it back up top to Addison Shockley. Over to Buttress. Buttress looks to drive a little to the right, gets in the corner, picks a dribble up, down into German. German goes up and is tied up for a jump ball, and that will remain Summersville ball. You want to know something? What? I don't know why I just thought about this, but the other night, whenever we were at Gainesville, there was someone referred to that game as a diaper dandy. Sam Piper did. A diaper Three point by Piper Holy is cow. good. His daughter on cue. Yeah. Uh, um, a diaper dandy is like a really, really solid freshman. <laughs> I don't know why that popped into my head. Keith back out to Callie Smith over to Nautica for three again. No good. Rebound. Going to go to Bakersfield out of bounds. Callie Smith has it stolen away by Alyssa Piper. She'll come up the left-hand side of the court here. She's guarded by number 11, Zastro. Now to Piper for three from the left wing. No good. Buttress chases that rebound down. Back out to Piper. She'll bring it around to Shockley. Back to Piper. Left-hand side layup. No good. Rebound Buttress put back. She will be fouled and should go to the line to shoot two. She will. Tim Denton says if girls could play a second half of the game like they do the first half, they would have a better season. Tim, that's what I was, I've talked about it two or three times tonight. I agree 100%, but I said it's been that way for the past two to three years. I don't know what's said or what's done in the locker room, but when they come out, it's not the same team. I mean, you look at the, you look at some of those first half compared to the second half. Like last year, last year they went uh, into the locker room uh, up on Alton, or not Alton, Ellington. Uh, at halftime last year. You know, you look at games like that, and and I'm not saying that. Nice rebound there by Was that an Addison one? Shockley. No, it was on the floor. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that they could be, you know, state championship contender or anything like that. But, I mean, the trajectory of the season is completely different if you can play, if you continue to play well in the second half. Yeah, you're correct. That's something that, you know, just in the past few years has developed. Buttress now. Over to Emma German, down to Piper. She'll give it back to Emma. Fisk now on the right wing, guarded by Smith. Left wing now to Piper, up top to Emma German. Back to Fisk. She'll shoot a three from the right wing. It's she good. got it. But they have shot and well. They've shot well tonight. They've shot and well tonight. Shot and well. It's 32-26 now with a minute 30 left. Summersville regains a six-point lead. This quarter feels like it's gone by faster. It has. Oh, that's what I was out in the hall earlier. We're going to have a foul there on Emma German on the shot, sending Nautica Smith to the line for two. After, at halftime, I told Austin, I said, I didn't think that half was going to end. I said, it, it drove me nuts how long. And then I was walking down, I had four or five people out there, I heard them talking. They was like, man, that was the longest half of basketball I think I've ever sat through. First free throw is good for Smith. Second one is good as well. Four-point ball game, 32-28. One minute, 20 seconds left in this third quarter. Fisk gets it over to Piper down to German now. They'll move it back around. Buttress up top. Piper will shoot a three from the left wing. No good. Chase down. It'll go out of bounds off the shot. Got a Butterfinger delivered to me. DoorDash. Yep. Cable Dash, whatever. <laughs> Something like that. Keith with the ball. Dumps it over to Nautica. Up. Left hand layup is good. And we have a two point ball game again. 
Fisk will bring it up the right side. Zimmer now in the game also for Bakersfield. Piper will get it. She's going to drive again. And she will be fouled on the floor, I believe. It's a one and one. And number 21, Summers, checks back in. First one is good for Piper. Second one is good as well. She shot the ball very well tonight so far. 34-30, 35 seconds left. Third quarter here. Nautica Smith will get it over to Summers. She swings it down to Ball goes down to Keith now. Nice position. Nice move by her off the glass. No good. Rebound, Piper. 24 seconds. Piper on the left wing crosses over to Fisk on the right. Shockley will shoot a three from up top. It's good. Nice looking shot there by Addison Shockley. 37 30, under 10 seconds now. Is that her first shot of the night? No, she shot twice before, I think. Nautica Smith. 2 1. She doesn't see it. She'll shoot a three at the buzzer, no good. She didn't see it, I don't think. Nope, that's gonna send us to the fourth quarter. 37 to 30 right now. Summersville's regained the lead that after a uh, 12 point lead. Wasn't it a 12 point lead? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was a 12 point lead. It was a 12 point lead where Bakersfield come back, tied it up, and now Summersville has cruised back out to a seven point lead. And you can see in here the Summersville cheerleaders getting the crowd pumped up and into the game. Cheerleaders are captain, sophomore Gracie Seelock, co-captain Emma German, who is actually playing basketball right now. She is the co-captain. And then we have Alyssa Piper also playing. Then we'll have Alexis Boyer, Haley Mitchell, Haley Brawley, Ellie Denton, Jalen Halstead, and Audrey Bell. They are coached by Ashley Beavers and assisted by Heather Cooper. Great group of girls, two great coaches. Uh, they come to every, guaranteed they're gonna be at every varsity boys game. Um, been to, and sometimes if they can, they take off and they'll go to a girls game, varsity girls game to cheer, away games, home games, everything. Good group of girls. Jonathan Smith is Summersville's watching. What's up, what's up John? Glad to see you're here with us. All right, we get ready to kick off this fourth quarter here. Summersville leads 37 to 30. Nautica Smith will bring it up for Bakersfield. Smith now for three. That was a quick three by her, no good. Fisk pulls it down. She'll throw it ahead to Emma German, left-hand side. Left-hand layup is no good. Pulled down by Nautica Smith, and she's going to be fouled by Alyssa Piper, who doesn't like the call, but guess what? It doesn't matter if she likes it or <laughs> not. That's what they're going to call it anyway. Janae Heine's watching, school employee here at Summersville. Thanks for watching, Janae. Glad to see it's you and not Jason this time. <laughs> Nautica will bring it back up. Now to the right wing, over to Keith, down to Summers, back up to Nautica. Thought about a three there, she didn't know. Zastro kicks it over to Keith, down into Summers, who loses her dribble, picked up by Fisk, and she'll bring it up right side of the court for Summersville. Cross-court pass to German, can't hang on to it, out of bounds as we approach the seven-minute mark. Nautica Smith will bring it up. Kicks it over to Zastro. Summers back up to Smith, over to Keith. Keith has been a force in the lane. When she gets the ball, gets good position. Nice pass underneath to Zastro. Can't finish it. Buttress pulls that one in. Now Fisk will bring it back for Summersville. Over to Piper. Down into German for three. It's good. Three-point shot for Emma German. Gives us a 10-point lead. 40 to 30.
Smith. Looking to get it over to Summers, I think. She'll go up with it instead off the glass. Good. Nautica Smith takes control there. And Marissa Fisk brings it back for Somersville. Almost has the ball stolen away by Smith. Buttress gets it back to Fisk. Shockley now looks to drive up. And she will be fouled. Shooting two. Foul will go against Zastro. Number 11. And that is her second. First one is good for Shockley. She's been very solid from the free throw line tonight. Mm -hmm. And we have a whole new switch coming in for Bakersfield. We will have Callie Smith um, for Shear, C. Platoon subs. Collins. And Nautica is the only one who stays on. Nautica Smith, number 12. C now with the ball. Ooh, I think she might have got away with a double dribble. You see Brashear, she'll kick it out. Collins gives it to Callie Smith. And Marissa Fisk is going to be whistled for that foul. Let's see, will inbound under their own basket. Gets it in to Brashear. Turns around no good. Nice defense there by Riley Buttress. Piper gets it out to German. Ahead to Shockley now. Summersville should pull back. Fisk is going to attack anyway. Up and under, no good. Yeah, you got to be killing the clock. You need to. You want to take 45 seconds off the clock if you can each possession. Yep. Yeah, when you're ahead 10 points like this, go ahead and slow it down, pull it out, and don't really dang sure don't need to be taking those shots like that, trying to split defenders and then going up with somebody on you, just scooping the ball. Bakersfield, on the other hand, are burning time off the clock, and they need to be looking to score. Shockley will get ahead to Fisk. C gets a hand in her face there, out to Piper. Swings it over German for another three. No good. And Emma German's going to commit another foul. Is that number four on her? Uh, I don't know if it's four. It's at least three. But she just about football tackled That is right number there. four on Emma German. Mason Gregory also has four, along with Jaden German. Has four, yeah. Summersville could find himself in serious foul trouble here, and this is why, you know, we talk about not coming down and just immediately rushing to shoot it. Yeah. You want to come down and you want to set up an offense, you want to run through it, you want to kill time off the clock. That way if you get in foul trouble at the end of the game, it doesn't hurt you as bad because there's not as much time left. That's right. But that was a beautiful pass right there down into Brashear over Shockley for two. But, yeah, you're 100% correct. Eight-point ball game here. Fisk. Shockley gets it. Over to German. She'll kick it out. Piper will shoot a three. No good. Now they'll push it ahead to Nautica Smith. Left-hand layup for Nautica is good. Six-point ball game with four minutes, 15 seconds on. So see, at this point, I mean, you can shoot a three or two here and there, but shooting three after three after three and missing them, you know, you're not going to do anything, and then they're coming down. We're going to have a foul on the floor, I believe. But they're coming down. They're running their offense. They're getting good looks at the basket. And Bakersfield. Yeah, and, yeah, and you've got to find a way to stop the bleeding on the on the other side. I mean, you've got to get stops here because they are. They're, they're trying to be urgent. They're losing this game. They want to they win this game. So when you're giving them opportunities to get, you know, yeah. to get the ball back. Yep. Brashear is fouled out now, number 32 for Bakersfield. That could be big. And Mason Gregory has checked in along with Jaden German, both of those carrying four fouls. First one for Fisk is good. 43-36. Well, Summersville, what I was saying is they're just coming down and they're shooting just three after three after three, and we're hitting one out of, you know, eight, one out of 12. And Bakersfield is content to set up their offense and get a look, good look close to the basket. And we're going to have a timeout here, uh, Bakersfield. But Summersville, if they would come down and do the same, set it up and not settle for a three. Keep moving that ball around until you can get a shot in the lane, get a, you know, a closer shot like that when you're up by 10 instead of just continually missing and giving them a chance to chip yep. away, chip away, chip away. 
four minutes remaining here in this game. Four minutes even halfway through the fourth quarter, 44 to 36. I mean, there's not a lot to be said. I think, I mean, Summersville had a 12-point had a lead, didn't they, in this fourth quarter at one point? Yep. And it's been chipped away. And, I mean, you, you it's easy to get repetitive here, but it's, it's I mean, it's the truth. It's. Well, you hear coaches, you hear fans that, you know, people know what they're talking about whenever they say, you know, take care of the ball. That doesn't just mean on your ball handling. That doesn't mean on your passing and stuff like that. Taking care of the ball is also getting the ball moved around, taking care of it as to where you're getting good looks at good shots, you know. Value each possession. Oh, there you go. All right, four minutes left here. Both teams have received a warning. If we get ready to get started off. This half definitely has flown by a lot quicker than that first half. Yeah, that first half. It <laughs> took about an hour. It felt like it took longer. Bakersfield ball. Nautica Smith with it. Over to Zastro now. Get, tries to get it back to Zastro. Can't get it in. Collins and Gregory tie up for it. And Gregory gives her a little flip. Now we see full court pressure here by Bakersfield. Get it ahead to Mason Gregory. Ball will be turned over there. Callie Smith gets it. And she's going to bring it up for Bakersfield, right side of the court. Off of her foot, Piper will pick it up. Big turnover right there as we hit three minutes and 30 seconds. And Bakersfield stays with the pressure D. Nautica Smith now. And we have a timeout, Summersville. 3.23 left. 44-36, four, or eight-point ball game. You said you checked the Alton score, score earlier? Yeah. Uh, Alton versus Couch, right? Yeah, Alton hung 60 on him in the first half. Hey. Uh, well, 58. 58 to 29 at halftime. 58-29. Hey, they're scoring like that. Go ahead and hang it. 72 to 34 at this point right now. Coach Jared Kelly's 74 very, to 34. He's a class act he's not gonna run score up on somebody just out of meanness or anything or try to make somebody look bad but if they're scoring the ball like that you got to keep scoring it as well what'd you say it's 74 34 uh yes what quarter third Ooh, they'll break 100 this quarter or this game huh possibly maybe, maybe. all right we get ready to start back here for Summersville and Bakersfield Summersville leads 44 36 Piper will get the ball inbound into Fisk. After this game, it will be varsity boys action. Summersville and Bakersfield. Pass down into Jaden German. She'll power dribble, go up. Fouled and one possibility if she can hit this free throw. I think uh, Callie Smith said I didn't touch her. From this angle, it didn't look like it, but he had the better angle for sure. Forty six thirty six ten point game now. Three minutes thirteen seconds. Jaden can make it an eleven point game, but she doesn't. Zastro will get it over to C. C brings it up now. Nautica. Down to Collins. Back up to C. She works it into Cali for note from the free throw line. Free throw no line. Yeah. Fisk brings it back up for Summersville. Under two minutes now. Dribbles straight to the corner off of her foot. Oh, she dribbled that off of her foot, and they're giving it back to Summersville. Yeah, I just saw it on there. Fisk kicks it back. Piper thought about a three, feeds it into Gregory. She'll get it underneath the German. Jaden German can't complete it. Ripped away by C, and she'll fly back up. 
And we're going to have a fifth foul on Jaden German. We got Janet Killing says, way to go, Emma. Stream is looking and sounding good. All right, thanks, Andy. And yes, it is the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, 46-36, Summersville with the lead. C will go to the line here. Emma German back in for Jaden after she fouled out. Emma and Mason both have four fouls each. Piper with the rebound, and she'll be fouled by Callie Smith. It's going to send her down to the other end for yep. two free throws. I think that's going to be number four on her. It is number four on her. Girls will play again on Thursday here at home uh, against Dora for their parent appreciation and senior night. And the boys following game, they, ha they have a big uh, road game at Bunker on Friday. Yeah. It's going to be Bunker's homecoming, but it's also uh, for a big, uh, big game in the conference. Zastro gets it into Callie Smith. She looks to drive over to Summers. She gets it. And Emma German with the big steal right there. I think she dribbled it out of bounds, though. A bunker win in that game, a bunker win would give Bunker sole possession of the big, or the, I almost said the Big Ten, the Big Springs <laughs> Conference regular season championship. A Summersville win creates a three-way tie between Bunker, Alton, and Summersville. So I would say Alton might even be wanting Summersville to win that one. <laughs> Maybe. We're going to have a foul here. That is a foul on Addison Shockley. It's only her second. First free throw is good for Callie Smith. Keith will check back in for Summers on Bakersfield side. Um, Bakersfield kind of needs to step up their urgency. Second one is good. If you notice, Summersville's coming down. We're shooting quick shots, and Bakersfield's coming down, and I mean, they're running through their offense like they should be to get good looks at shots, but they're taking a lot of time off the clock on each possession. Yeah, I mean, we're here at two minutes right yeah. now. Gregory will be fouled by Keith, I believe. Yeah, we're under two with a minute 58 left. It's a nine-point ball game. You cooking supper tonight? <laughs> Shoot, no. First one for Gregory is no good. Bend your knees. She's shooting all alarms right there. Heck no, I'm not cooking supper. Darn. Second one, no good. Oh, it bounces oh. around and falls, so yeah, it is good. Ten-point ball game, minute 57. C brings it up. Keith. Gonna be called for the travel. I'll tell you something that's uh, affected Summersville. They played well tonight, but uh, I mentioned it earlier. Emma Havens is missing due to uh, the death of her grandpa. Mm -hmm. Whenever Elizabeth comes into the game, everything changes for Summersville because she is so intense. Everything she does is fast paced, you know, and that feeds other girls. Three point shot. Why air ball. shoot that? I mean, there's a minute and a <laughs> half left, and you're up ten. Well, dribble the clock out. They're down too far to foul you, like. Well, coach don't say anything to you. You'll just keep doing it. Um, but with Elizabeth, when she's there, you know, you can feel the momentum change when she goes checks into the game and everything. So she's definitely missed. Three-point shot, no good there. But, Elizabeth, if you're listening, you are in our prayer, sister. Uh, love you. And hope everything starts turning out for you. But you are missed. Turnover right there by Summersville. 105, 48-38. Nautica with the ball. Splits the defenders, goes up. Floaters no good. Rebound Gregory. Under a minute now, and she'll give it to Fisk. Brings it up the right-hand side of the court. Right here, we got a foul. I believe on Nautica Smith. 
Shoot two. That is on Nautica. That's going to be her fourth, I believe. It is her fourth. Zeb Howe's watching. Zebulon, my man. How are you? He is a Mizzou Tiger now. Went from a Summersville Wildcat to a Mizzou Tiger. 48 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Summersville, 49-38. Mizzou's got a big game, or not a big game, but a game against Vanderbilt tonight. I seen a picture of Zeb on Facebook the other day uh, on the Mizzou page. Yeah. Cheering. Got that Auburn game. Was it Auburn? 44 seconds left now. Callie Smith out to C for three. No good. Rebound by C. She'll dump it into Zimmer. She gets it out. Callie for three. No good. Well, Summersville is going to get the win that we've been talking about they needed. I believe putback is good by Nautica. Uh, Nine-point ball game. 20 seconds left, but I believe uh, we talked earlier. I think it's win number four for the yeah. season. So it's a win that the girls really needed. Two of those wins, you said, come against Norwood, right? Yes. I'm, I don't remember who the third third win was. That's what I was trying to think. I can't remember either. But So my beautiful wife, Kimberly Bradley's watching. Plato, I think. I didn't think they played Plato yet. In the Kabul tournament. Oh. Under a minute left in this game. In a game that seems like it's taking forever to get through. A lot of whistles. I mean, uh, I think both were in the double bonus in the first half. And we are in the double bonus now. Bakersfield's only two fouls away from the double bonus. So, I mean, any time the whistle's blown for a foul, somebody's shooting. 49 to 40. I'm starving looking at this Butterfinger. I can't wait for this game to get over. That's what I just saw a uh, Taco Bell commercial. My mouth started watering. <laughs> Summerfield ball, Addison Shockley to inbound. Full court pressure still here by Bakersfield. She tries to get it in, can't get it in to uh, Alyssa Piper. Zastro slaps it out of bounds. Fisk will bring it. And we're going to have a foul, Nautica Smith, 16.6 .6 seconds. See me, that there's where she just dribbled the ball out of bounds, fell, and they called the foul. But And Nautica Smith will foul out. That young lady has had a great game for Bakersfield, scored the majority of their points, I believe, and ran the floor, ran it as a general very well. Fisk will shoot two. First one's no good. I just read her lips and she said, oh, my back hurts. I'm going to say on that bump and fall right there, she tweaked her back or something. Second one is up, and it is good. 50-40. C will bring it up. Ha, <laughs> Dustin Harrell says, put up is good there by Summers. Dustin Harrell says, I'm enjoying my Taco Bell from home. Who's the real winner now, Austin? Oof. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a flagrant foul here, or an intentional foul. That will go against. Oh, two-hand shoved her in the back. I just saw it on the, yeah. on the thing. Oh, wow. That goes against number 44, Callie Smith. See where I can see Callie Smith very upset talking to her coach down there. I don't think the girl meant it with any ill intention. She seems visibly upset about it. Well, so. I mean, how many times have we seen this year players try to foul? I said we've seen games where they don't call the fouls, and there's, I mean, they're actually shoving them two hands. Second one is good as well for Fisk. 2.8 seconds. Summersville will get the ball back. Yeah, we've, we've witnessed plenty of games where there's fouls like that. They don't call it. I mean, the kids more or less have to clobber one another. I will say this, though. You know, you got Clint Berry and them up here 
typically they don't let it get out of hand like that. Yeah, and that will do it for the Summersville Lady Wildcats beating the Bakersfield Lions 52-42 in a much needed win. But we're going to go to break, and when we come back, guys, we will be varsity boys action and what Summersville fans have been waiting for seems an eternity to get to watch yeah. their boys play again. So, guys, we're going to go ahead and take a break. We'll be back in 12, 15 minutes, something like that. Welcome to Summersville Wildcats Live. Hey, Andy Earls here, your owner operator. I just want to say thank you for tuning in with us and for all of the support. This is the first year of SWL, and we are excited to bring it to you week in and week out. We also want to say thank you to all of our amazing sponsors that you're about to see and hear in this ad video. We'll be back live with the game action shortly, and we hope you enjoy this production. Go Wildcats! Hey, I love bringing you the SWL live streams in my spare time. But when I'm not here, I'm at Baldwin Chevrolet in Popper Bluff, Missouri. I have been selling cars for 15 years now and love the opportunity to earn your business. Four lots full of new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from. The majority of these are backed by a lifetime warranty at no charge to you. Come see me at Baldwin Chevrolet or call me directly at 501-413-9715. I look forward to seeing you. A big shout out to our primary sponsor, Security Bank of the Ozarks. They have five locations, six different 24-hour ATMs, offering mobile banking, online bill pay, mobile deposits, and much more. They also have a debit card fraud monitoring app that you can check your balance on, as well as many other functions. Visit them online at www.sbozarks.com. Security Bank of the Ozarks. Go Wildcats. Your primary sponsor, Current Incorporated out of West Plains, Missouri. Family owned and operated since 1990. They provide electrical, heating air services, and that's installation for both residential and commercial customers. Their electricians, gosh, they do anything from replacing a light bulb to completely wiring an entire commercial building. The HVAC department does anything from replacing an air filter to installing rooftop heating and air systems and full custom duct systems. They even have their own wireless high-speed internet in West Plains and surrounding areas. Current Inc. SWL's primary sponsor, Wendy's Canoe Rental. They have canoe, kayak, raft, and tube rentals for Jack's Fork and Current River. They're located at the south end of Highway 19 Bridge over Jack's Fork River. Get a hold of them toll free at 866-889-8177 or online www.wendyscanoe.com. Go Cats! All of us here at Summersville Wildcats Live want to give a big shout out to the beautiful Tuttle family and their company Tuttle Logging on their Wildcat sponsorship package for the 2021-2022 season. The Tuttle family is your local experts for all things logging and they want you to know that they are proud supporters of not only Summersville Wildcats Live but the city of Summersville. Big thank you again to the Tuttle family and their company Tuttle Logging. SWL wants to give a big thank you to Kathy's Creations out of Somerville, Missouri. In fact, Kathy's Creations is right on the square there in Somersville, and they have a plethora of different ways to serve you, like fabric work, quilting, silks, gift items, and much, much more. Kathy's Creations want to wish the Somerville Wildcats Athletics the best of luck on the upcoming season. Kathy's Creations, 417-331-6508. Go Cats! Hey, from everybody here at Summersville Wildcats Live, we're going to give a big shout out and a thank you to Mr. Brandon Brawley and all the fine folks there at Brawley Fertilizer and Lime Spreading on their Wildcat Package Sponsorship for the 2021-2022 live streaming season. Hey, if you need fertilizer and lime spreading, they are the place to go in this area. You can get a hold of them at 417-331-1753 and they want to wish the Summersville Wildcats nothing but the best of luck on the upcoming sports season. Our tour on the sponsor video makes a stop at Pineview Christian Home. We want to say thank you to Pineview Christian Home for the Wildcat sponsor package on the 2021-22 streaming season. It's a social service organization that's been in business since 1994, long-standing with great customer service, 
friendly staff located at 4281 Highway 17 right there in Summersville. To get a hold of them, 417-932-4557. How about Triple T Logistics out of Summersville, Missouri? Thank you guys for your sponsorship. Hey, if you got any kind of logistical needs, no matter how big or small, pick up that phone and dial Jay and Sue Duncan, the owners, at 417-247-1742. They're a family-owned and operated business specializing in hauling flatbed freight in Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Tennessee. Triple T Logistics, go Wildcats. Summerville Wildcats Live is a Redline Media Lines company. Redline also operates the award-winning Corning Sports Report. That's Arkansas's number one viewed high school sports streaming company. Dogpack Media out of Van Buren and Alton Sports Network. Hey, if you or your high school would like information from Redline about live streaming an event near you, simply reach out to myself, Andy Earls, at 501-413-9715. Redline Media Lines, connect the world. Hey guys, listen up. If yourself, your group, or your business is looking for decals, well look no further. Drop Dead Decals is your one-stop shop for all things decals. Monograms of all sizes, colors and designs, fridge magnet decals, car decals, and anything else you can imagine. You guessed it, decal wise. Owner Head Eddie has great customer service and is eager to get going on your next decal project. Find them on Facebook and send them a message with your ideas, wants, and needs. Drop Dead Decals, go Wildcats. As we record this ad, the SWL Facebook page is up to 600 followers, and that's in less than one full month. It's pretty incredible considering the population in the Summersville city limits. Hey, we sincerely appreciate our loyal fan support of not only us, but these hardworking Wildcat and Lady Wildcat athletes. Let's keep that momentum going into the streaming season. Help us share these feeds and make sure to like and follow us. Let's go Wildcats. Hey guys, let's not forget that select SWL live streams will be seen on our Redline Media Lines YouTube channel this season. Watch on your big screen from the comfort of your home with a smart TV and the YouTube app. Just a few advantages over Facebook like pausing and rewinding live events. Make sure to click that subscribe button to our Redline Media Lines YouTube channel. Let's go Wildcats. Redline, connect the world. Let's all go and subscribe to Summersville's own Austin Bradley's College Basketball Insider Channel on YouTube. Austin and his passion and knowledge of college basketball shine through on this channel week in and week out. Speaking of week in and week out, weekly polls every week, bracket breakdowns, and much more analysis from Austin can be seen and even discussed on this channel by commenting with Austin on the chat feature each week. CBI with Austin Bradley. It is never too late to become a sponsor here with us at Summersville Wildcats Live. When you sponsor, you aren't just supporting the people who support Summersville Athletics. You're supporting these young men and women who work so hard and represent the Wildcats in a manner that we can all be proud of. If you have questions about becoming a sponsor, please feel free to contact us on Facebook and reach out to owner-operator Andy Earls at 501-413-9715. Let's go Wildcats. We want to say thank you to all of our sponsors from all of us at Summersville Wildcats Live. And we want to say thanks to you for sticking with us through this sponsor video. Hey, your live production, it'll be right back shortly. We want to say thank you to all of our sponsors from all of us at Summersville Wildcats Live. And we want to say thanks to you for sticking with us through this sponsor video. Hey, your live production, it'll be right back shortly.
we want to say thank you to all of our sponsors from all of us at Summersville Wildcats Live. And we want to say thanks to you for sticking with us through this sponsor video. Hey, your live production, it'll be right back shortly. We want to say thank you to all of our sponsors from all of us at Summersville Wildcats Live. And we want to say thanks to you for sticking with us through this sponsor video. Hey, your live production, it'll be right back shortly. We want to say thank you to all of our sponsors from all of us at Summersville Wildcats Live. And we want to say thanks to you for sticking with us through this sponsor video. Hey, your live production, it'll be right back shortly. Tristan Duncan being awarded his 1,000 point ball. Big feet. Jeez Louise, big accomplishment there for that young man. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit the starters up tonight. Starters for Bakersfield will be number 30, Bean. Number 10, Cotter. Number 21, Lashley. Number 33, Freeman. And number 34, Luna. For Somersville, it will be the same as usual. Andrew Bushman, Garen Greer, Josh Prisco, Tristan Duncan, and Gavin Keeling. I'm going to go ahead and take some time here, guys. I want to say, uh, kind of give a shout out here. Uh, Summersville community has been hit with a couple of tragic deaths of two outstanding, important men of uh, not only Summersville, but of these teams. Tom Hawkins, uh, great guy, one of the best you'd ever meet in your life. Grandfather to Trey Fisk and Andrew Bushman on the Somerville team. He passed away recently, was laid to rest today. Uh, Devlin Hawkins, probably the biggest supporter Somerville has in any sport, but mainly basketball. She says she has a little hashtag, once a wildcat, always a wildcat. She bleeds black and gold. Uh, Devlin, family, we love you guys. We miss you guys. We're here for you guys. We're very sorry to hear about Tom. Uh, another one is Craig Wills. That is the grandfather of Tristan Duncan. He passed away recently as well and will be laid to rest uh, in the next day or two. Uh, Tristan, lifelong member of the uh, Somersville community. Jay Duncan, Sue Duncan, Debbie Wills, Taylor Duncan as well, Tanya, Tanya Smith now. Um, our thoughts and prayers are with all of you guys as well. He will be missed. Like I said, he's a great man. Two important men in this community. Uh, gone, but the guarantee and not forgotten. They made too big of an impact on too many people's lives. And we are going to get started off here. And Summersville will control the tip. Gavin Keeling brings it up. I have said, I've, I've gone on record saying here, uh, Summersville's best performances are the games that they jump out. We'll see here if they can do that. Yeah. That'll be a good start if it goes. No good, but Duncan will rein that one in. No good there. Gets his own rebound. Powers back up. No foul called there. No way there wasn't a foul, but we'll come back. Number 33, Fry Fryman. Whoa, nice uh, shot fake there. But yep. he come down kind of awkwardly. That was number 10, Cotter, with the shot fake and went up. Uh, for any Bakersfield fans watching, I do apologize for the Houston tournament. I called him Freeman and Freeman, and it is Fryman. I was uh, I was told that tonight. I do apologize, so I will do my best tonight to, to make sure we call him by his right name. Janet Killing says, let's go Wildcats. I agree, Janet. Gavin now, left wing, down to Greer, up to Josh Prisco, over to Bushman, right wing, three point, no good. And Greer, for whatever reason, didn't even go after that. And it will be Bakersfield ball. Some pressure coming from Summersville. Yeah, they get it into Fryman. He comes up. That's a nice little uh, pass fake there by Fryman. Yeah, 
I'm trying to replay my head because it looked like a travel to me. Killing on the left wing, guarded by Cotter. Kicks it over to Bushman on the right. Bushman brings it back up to Killing. Carter once again. Bushman guarded by number 30, Bean. Thrown down to Prisco in the right corner, up to Duncan now. Moving the ball really well is Summersville. Into Garen Greer, out to, Pris or to Prisco for three. Nice three-point shot there by Josh Prisco. Three to two now, as almost two minutes has burned off the clock. Great ball movement by Summersville. And we've got a quick timeout here by Bakersfield, 30 seconds, as you've seen the press working as it has in the past for Summersville. Um, we did watch these guys in Kabul. That's the only time, or in Houston, I'm sorry. It's the only time I've seen them play. And Bakersfield is capable of scoring the ball in big runs, as we've yep. seen them do a couple different times there. So for Summersville, as you said, they need to get a big jump here and then lock it down and play like we know they can and play like we've seen them play. Congratulations once again to the Summersville Lady Cats. They had a big win right there, 10 point victory over Bakersfield when they've been struggling to get this season. Fryman looks to get it in to Cotter. Full court pressure still going on. Ball's pushed ahead to Bean. He gives it up. Layup. Blocked by uh, Duncan. And layup is blocked big time by uh, Tristan Duncan. Bushman out to Keeling. He'll take another three. No good. Fryman grabs it. Kicks it out. Stolen away by Prisco. He goes. We're going to have a block. He, well, he threw that hand up. I thought he was going to call a charge. I was going to take the headset off for a minute. <laughs> Was he sh I don't think he was shooting that. He was actually passing it. It looked like a shot, but he went to pass it off to Gavin, I believe. Bushman will inbound. Gets it up to Prisco. Almost stolen away by Bean. Three point for Duncan. No good. And we're going to have a foul on Summersville. I believe Garen Greer. Yep. Coach says, quit shaking your head and get back up here and press. Cotter trapped. Wow, oh, he carried that. Travel or carry one. Back over to Prisco, stolen away. Bushman with the floater is good. And Summersville needs to keep the pressure up here. Keeling went for the steal, didn't pull it in. Kicks it off. We got a foul and an and one right there for Lashley if he can hit this free throw. Lashley's three-point play is complete. Five to five with 535 left on the clock in the first quarter. Keeling brings it over to the right. Bushman swings it down to Prisco. He gets it in the dunk and spins. Goes up off the glass. No good. Fryman comes back. Throws it ahead. Too far ahead where Bean couldn't even get to it. Keeling over to Bushman, down to Prisco. He'll shoot a three from the right corner. Got it's it. good. That's two in a row for him. Cotter now with the ball. Pressure still by Summersville. Cotter looks to get it up to Fryman. He does. Ahead now. Nice job by Tristan Duncan to get in there and slap the ball off of Luna's leg. And it will go back to Summersville. Very nice. Well, that's pretty touchy being that he just got whistled for a reach foul. But it was a good, clean strip. Prisco feeds it into Duncan. He'll power up. It's good. Ten to five now. Four it's minutes. It's nice to see Prisco wanting the ball. You know, you saw he called for yeah. it. Fryman gets it ahead now to Lashley. He'll kick it back out. Almost has it slowed. It does get stolen away. Here we got Gavin Killing. Left-hand layup is up off the glass. Good. And Cotter pushes ahead to Luna. Now to Lashley. For three, 12 to eight. What is that vibrating? Is that your phone? Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Gavin Keeling now swings it over to Bushman on the left wing. 
pulls it around back. I think we're going to have a foul or a jump. Jump ball between Cotter and Bushman, and that will go to Bakersfield. Lashley will take a seat, and Collins will check in. Cotter trapped right here. Greer gets the steal ahead to Prisco. Prisco's going to come up, right hand layup. It's good, 14 to 8. Fryman back the other way, left hand side, spins, gets in the lane. Off the glass, good for him. That was a tough shot, that was. too. Bushman slows it up, brings it up for Somersville. Three minutes, 30 seconds left in this first quarter. Gavin Keeling with the ball. Prisco now back to Keeling. Down to Duncan in the right corner. Move it back up top, back to Duncan. Bushman for three from the left wing, no good. Pulled down by Fryman. He was talking earlier about Bushman. Boy has been shooting the ball tremendously. Three point shot, no good there. Bushman flies in for that one, but he has been shooting the ball tremendously in the past few weeks. Floater by Bushman is up and good. As you saw Fryman try to set up for a charge, didn't get the call. Says we got Devlin and Troy both watching. Guys, thanks for watching with us. Our prayers are with you. Charlie Beavers is watching. Thanks, Charlie. Cotter now on the left wing. Kicks it down to Fryman, right corner three for him. Is good, nice shot there. 16-13. That was a nice shot. It yeah, looked good it from the moment it left his hand as well. Keeling slows it down for Somersville. Now to Bushman. Move it down to Prisco in the corner. Greer in the middle. Goes up. Too hard. No good. Fryman pulls that one in. Duncan strips it away, but it will go out of bounds. Bakersfield ball. Trey Fisk will check in for Garen Greer. You said Garen pretty aggressive there, bud. Did I? Yeah. Ball swung around. Number 30 will take the three. No good. Rebound. Pulled down by Luna. Put back for Fryman's no good, but he will be fouled. That'll be two on Tristan Duncan. Something Tristan's battled this year is fouls. Foul, yeah, foul trouble has been a has plagued him all season. First one by Fryman's no good, and Zach Craig will check in for Tristan. Yeah, uh, I don't remember in the years past him being bad about that, but this year he's had a lot of fouls called against him. Second one, no good, pulled down by Keeling, and he flies back up for Somersville over to Trey. Trey goes up, no good, Too strong. pulled in by Fryman. And Zach Craig slaps it away to Gavin Keeling, and he's going to fly back. Left-hand layup for him is good. And, and one. one. Possibility right here. <laughs> you just saw Clint Berry. Uh, Collins did not like that call and mouthed back, and Clint turned around and gave him a little, you're not going to talk to me like that, young man. Throw me attitude, I'll throw you some back. Free throws no good there, so no three-point play. Tough layup, though, he did finish with. Fryman back for Bakersfield. Bean Ooh. to Cotter. How he didn't get back called for Bean. the foul there, I don't know. Moves it to Collins. Layup floater is good. The angle on that was tough. Yep. And Bushman comes back for Summersville, favoring the right side of the court. But he's going to kick it over to Keeling. Back to Bushman. Now Prisco. As Summersville moves it around up top. Nice pass fake by Andrew Bushman. Three-point rolls around, no good. Out of bounds, off Bakersfield. Summersville ball. That's the second time I've seen number 12 Collins start like going at the ref. Sanders didn't didn't react like uh, Barry did. Number 23 is now checked in. That's Tally. Killing fakes a shot. <laughs> Three point for Prisco, no good. Zach Craig's gonna be whistled for that foul on the rebound. 
18-15, under a minute now, 48.7 seconds left in this first quarter. Forty-five seconds. Cotter with the ball. Kicks it to Collins. Back to Cotter. Priming now with the ball. Squared up at the free throw. Prisco on him. Bean looks to drive. Kicks it out. Collins for three. No good. Pulled in by Prisco. 28 seconds. Bushman ahead to Fisk. Can't control it. And it will be turnover. Bakersfield ball. Shy Richardson's watching with us again. Thanks, Shy. Beam with the ball. Bushman comes out on him. Over to Fryman. Stripped away by Bushman, but he gets it back. And it's chased down. Bean looks to drive. Jump stop around. Nice shot at the buzzer to cut it to one point. 18 to 17 now. That was a beautiful shot right there. It started out a little low scoring, and then it jumped up all of a sudden, 18-17. Yeah, it's kind of ramped up. Summersville uh, scoring the ball pretty well. Struggled there the last couple minutes. Uh, need to get a grip on things and get some good stops down here on the defensive end. The ball's going to fall with the, the boys. We got we got Gavin Keeling. We got Tristan Duncan. We got Andrew Bushman. We got Josh Prisco now, like you said, calling for the ball, wanting the ball. You know, all four of those boys I just mentioned there can score the ball. Just about at will. I mean, Prisco's got eight of the 18 points. Yeah. So, you know, if they can start getting some stops, the shots are going to start falling eventually. So if they can get some defensive stops, make sure they're only uh, getting one shot up on that end of the court. No offensive rebounds, no putbacks. Tara Denton's watching. College girl, graduated last year. Thanks for watching, Tara. And we get ready to take the floor here. It will be Summersville ball. Keeling will inbound to Bushman. Over to Prisco now. Back up to Craig. Keeling swings it down, Bushman. He looks, gets across to Prisco. He'll drive, kick it over to Bushman. Three from the corner, no good. Pulled in by Prisco. Keeling, three from the left wing. It's got good. It. Looks like he got a little bump there by Cotter, but nothing called. 21-17. Fryman to Cotter. Cotter will bring it around up top. Gives it back to Fryman. He tells Bean, come get it. Oh, <laughs> doesn't give it to him. Now Cotter with it. He's going to shoot a three. It's good. Dang. I watched him in warm-ups uh, down there. He hit like three or four in a row, what I saw. 20-21, one-point ball game again. Bushman with the ball on the right wing, back up to Keeling. They dump it down into Zach Craig. Turns the wrong way. Keeling will take a three now. No good. Bushman's going to be called for that. Nice block out by Cotter. Zach Craig caught the ball, turned away from the basket, kicked it out whenever he had nobody on him. Had he just been in that post position, turned to the basket, he'd have scored. Trey Fisk going to take a seat. Garen Greer will come back in. He has, is it one or two fouls he has? One. He has one. Tristan Duncan has two, so he'll sit a little longer. Six minutes, 49 seconds. Bean gets it down to Cotter for another three. No good. That will be pulled in by Bushman. Nice handles by him to keep the ball. And Zach Craig now over to Bushman. Keeling calling for it. And he'll bring it back up around top. Into Greer, out to Bushman. Bushman's missed two threes now. He's not thinking about shooting first anymore. Craig looks to drive, kicks it back out. Bushman, he'll drive, shoot a floater, bounces around, and it's good. 23-20 as we approach six minutes in this second quarter. Fryman guarded by Prisco. Swings it up to Cotter. Thought about another three. Bean will take a three from the right cor left corner. No good. 
Ripped down by Greer. Prisco brings it up to Keeling. And he's going to set up and wait for help to arrive. Prisco from the corner. Three-point shot, no good. Garen Greer gets it. Zach Craig now off the leg. Bushman fakes a shot, hands it off to Greer. Goes up, and he's going to be fouled on the shot. That foul is on number 33, Fryman. Free throw is good. Second one is good as well. 25-20, five minutes, 30 seconds. And Fryman will bring it up. Kicks it over to the right corner. That's Bean. Now up to Luna, top of the key. He'll shoot a three. No good. Thought about it for way too long. Zach Craig will get it over to Prisco. Bean pressuring him up ahead to Bushman. Gavin Killing on the right wing. Gets it up to Garen Greer. He'll get it over to Andrew Bushman. Bushman brings around up top at the volleyball line. Kicks it over to Keeling. Back to Bushman. Summersville content to slow it down, set up an offense, and run it through. Zach Craig in the corner, brings it back out. They swing it around Bushman. He's going to get a look at a three. It's Got good. 28-20. It. That young man, as I mentioned earlier, has been shooting the ball extremely well over the last few weeks. Luna gets another look at a three, looks to drive, tries to dump it off, stolen by Greer, and Prisco is going to slow it up a little bit for Summersville. Right-hand side for him. Doing some nice handles there. Back out to Bushman. Swings it. Keeling. 4-3. No good. Air ball. And it will be out of bounds off Summersville. It's a little too quick on that one. Yep. Timeout called Summersville. Timeout called Bakersfield there. Timeout by Bakersfield. Timeout Summersville. Coach Harold just said full timeout. So, 28-20. Eight-point lead for Summersville. And like you said, you know, when we come out and really shoot the ball well and typically goes pretty good for us. Well, let's just hope the boys can keep it up. Pressure on defense is good as you see the Summersville cheerleaders. We got Captain Emma German, co -cap or Captain, I'm sorry, Gracie Seelock, co-captain Emma German. Then we have uh, Alexis Boyer, Haley Mitchell, Alyssa Piper, Jalen Halstead, Ellie Denton, Haley Brawley, Sydney Mahan, and Audrey Bell. I think I got everybody. I don't have a list in front of me today. But a great group of girls, great group of cheerleaders. As I said, if there's a game being played for the boys, guaranteed they're going to be there home or away. And on nights that they can, they even break away and go to the girls' games to, to cheer them on. Good program here. We got Jason Heine watching. Jason, I just said I'd rather see Janae's name, so get off here and get on hers. <laughs> I got I got his dad on my side now, so. All right, here we start back with Bean. Look how bad he, Bean is carrying that. He carries it every time he dribbles the ball. Ooh, Fryman guarded by Prisco. Ryman will shoot a three, no good. Pulled down by Greer, and he'll push it ahead to Keeling. Out to Bushman. Nice fake by Bushman. Carter come flying by. Ball's kicked out. Prisco will shoot a jump shot, no good. And they'll come back the other way. Bean in control. Kicks it over to the top, up top to Fryman. Now Cotter. He'll hook around, goes up, and I say there's a travel there. Oh, we're going to call a foul. He did a step or two, then a jump stop and another step. That is a travel in any book. But we will have a foul call against number 24, Josh Prisco, getting caught to the line for two. Just his first. 
free throw is good. Good. He's a good shooter, so expect for him to make both of them. And Lashley will now check in, and that will send Tally to the bench. <laughs> Second one's good. Jason Honey says, some people have to work just listening. <laughs> Keep it up, Jason. Prisco now up to Keeling. Prisco will drive. Hand, tries to hand off to Greer. He should have went up with that shot. Nice job by Andrew Bushman. Beat back to get the steal there from Bean. And he comes back. Sloppy floater, no good. Pulled down by Lashley. Out to Cotter. Yeah, that's not. I don't know that that was the look he was wanting to get there. No. Cotter for a deep three. No good. Bushman pulls that one in. No, he should have looped around and pulled back. Young player, though. He's only a sophomore. And there's a steal by Bean. Ahead to Cotter. Layup is good. 24-28, four-point ball game now. Keeling, high left wing with it. Gets it into Greer at the free throw. He'll kick it back over to Keeling. Keeling's not there anymore, and it is a turnover. Summersville. Tristan Duncan checks back in. Zach Craig will go to the bench. Fryman brings it up. Over to Bean. Now to Cotter. Fryman in the left. Luna, nice turnaround jump shot by him. Two-point ball game, 28-26. Somersville leads. That's a pretty quick jump shot there. I guess I should say a quick and pretty jump shot. Cross-court pass to Prisco, down to Bushman now. Corner, he'll drive. Kicks it back out. Prisco out to Keeling. He'll shoot a three, no good. <clears throat> Bushman will chase that rebound down. Gives it up to Duncan. He'll shoot a three. Left wing three is Got good it. for Tristan Duncan right off the bench. As you see, his wrist is taped up. Uh, when he went to the bench earlier after that second foul, he was bleeding. So they've got it taped up. Luna just must not be a three-point shooter. Cotter is, though, and he misses that one. Greer pulls it in, and Prisco will bring it up. Luna, he's had six, eight different opportunities, wide-open threes, and he won't shoot it, so I'm going to guess he's not much of a three-point guy. Bushman loops around. And they throw it away right again. There. Turnover, Summersville. Head now to Luna. Lashley fakes the three. Bushman out on him. Bean gets Duncan up in the air. Cotter now, Keeling on him. Over to Fryman, left wing. Fryman will bring it up. Down to 35 seconds. Over to Luna in the high right wing. Fryman will come get it. Duncan over on him. As Bakersfield's trying to get for the last shot. Luna now up to Bean. Cotter down to 10 seconds. Keeling on Cotter. Cotter spins, fakes, kicks it out. Lashley a shoot from the free throw line. No good. Pulled down by Keeling with two seconds. One, he's going to shoot from half court. Off the side of the rim, no good. That's going to send us to the locker room at halftime. 31-26, five-point lead for Summersville in a game that has been back and forth, back and forth. Uh, I believe the only lead that Bakersfield had was right off the get-go. Uh, get yeah, they jumped, up, they jumped up, scored real fast. It was 2-0, to zero, and ever since then, Summersville's led Yep. with leads as big as, what, eight? Yes, led 28-20 to 20 at one yep. point. So we're going to go ahead and take a break, guys, let you put you to our ad video, and then we're going to come back, and it will be the second half of varsity action here, Summersville versus Bakersfield. Welcome to Summersville Wildcats Live. Hi, Andy Earls here, your owner operator. I just want to say thank you for tuning in with us and for all of the support. This is the first year of SWL, and we are excited to bring it to you week in and week out. 
We also want to say thank you to all of our amazing sponsors that you're about to see and hear in this ad video. We'll be back live with the game action shortly, and we hope you enjoy this production. Go Wildcats. Hey, I love bringing you the SWL live streams in my spare time. But when I'm not here, I'm at Baldwin Chevrolet in Popper Bluff, Missouri. I've been selling cars for 15 years now and love the opportunity to earn your business. Four lots full of new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from. The majority of these are backed by a lifetime warranty at no charge to you. Come see me at Baldwin Chevrolet or call me directly at 501-413-9715. I look forward to seeing you. A big shout out to our primary sponsor, Security Bank of the Ozarks. They have five locations, six different 24-hour ATMs, offering mobile banking, online bill pay, mobile deposits, and much more. They also have a debit card fraud monitoring app that you can check your balance on, as well as many other functions. Visit them online at www.sbozarks.com. Security Bank of the Ozarks. Go Wildcats. Your primary sponsor, Current Incorporated out of West Plains, Missouri. Family owned and operated since 1990. They provide electrical, heating air services, and that's installation for both residential and commercial customers. They're electricians, gosh, they do anything from replacing a light bulb to completely wiring an entire commercial building. The HVAC department does anything from replacing an air filter to installing rooftop heating and air systems and full custom duct systems. They even have their own wireless high-speed internet in West Plains and surrounding areas, Current Inc. SWL's primary sponsor, Wendy's Canoe Rental. They have canoe, kayak, raft, and tube rentals for Jack's Fork and Current River. They're located at the south end of Highway 19 Bridge over Jack's Fork River. Get a hold of them toll free at 866-889-8177 or online www.wendyscanoe.com. Go Cats! All of us here at Summersville Wildcats Live want to give a big shout out to the beautiful Tuttle family and their company Tuttle Logging on their Wildcat sponsorship package for the 2021-2022 season. The Tuttle family is your local experts for all things logging and they want you to know that they are proud supporters of not only Summersville Wildcats Live but the city of Summersville. Big thank you again to the Tuttle family and their company Tuttle Logging. SWL wants to give a big thank you to Kathy's Creations out of Somerville, Missouri. In fact, Kathy's Creations is right on the square there in Somersville, and they have a plethora of different ways to serve you, like fabric work, quilting, silks, gift items, and much, much more. Kathy's Creations want to wish the Somerville Wildcats Athletics the best of luck on the upcoming season. Kathy's Creations, 417-331-6508. Go Cats! Hey, from everybody here at Summersville Wildcats Live, we're going to give a big shout out and a thank you to Mr. Brandon Brawley and all the fine folks there at Brawley Fertilizer and Lime Spreading on their Wildcat Packet Sponsorship for the 2021-2022 live streaming season. Hey, if you need fertilizer and lime spreading, they are the place to go in this area. You can get a hold of them at 417-331-1753 and they want to wish the Summersville Wildcats nothing but the best of luck on the upcoming sports season. Our tour on the sponsor video makes a stop at Pineview Christian Home. We want to say thank you to Pineview Christian Home for the Wildcat sponsor package on the 2021-22 streaming season. It's a social service organization that's been in business since 1994, long-standing with great customer service, friendly staff, located at 4281 Highway 17 right there in Summersville. To get a hold of them, 417-932-4557. How about Triple T Logistics out of Summersville, Missouri? Thank you guys for your sponsorship. Hey, if you got any kind of logistical needs, no matter how big or small, pick up that phone and dial Jay and Sue Duncan, the owners, at 417-247-1742. They're a family-owned and operated business specializing in hauling flatbed freight in Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Tennessee. Triple T Logistics, go Wildcats.
Somerville Wildcats Live is a Redline Media Lines company. Redline also operates the award-winning Corning Sports Report. That's Arkansas's number one viewed high school sports streaming company. Dog Pack Media out of Van Buren and Alton Sports Network. Hey, if you or your high school would like information from Redline about live streaming an event near you, simply reach out to myself and your girls at 501-413-9715. Redline Media Lines, connect the world. Hey guys, listen up. If yourself, your group, or your business is looking for decals, well, look no further. Drop Dead Decals is your one-stop shop for all things decals, monograms of all sizes, colors and designs, fridge magnet decals, car decals, and anything else you can imagine. You guessed it, decal wise. Owner Head Eddie has great customer service and is eager to get going on your next decal project. Find them on Facebook and send them a message with your ideas, wants, and needs. Drop Dead Decals, go Wildcats. As we record this ad, the SWL Facebook page is up to 600 followers, and that's in less than one full month. It's pretty incredible considering the population in the Summersville city limits. Hey, we sincerely appreciate our loyal fan support of not only us, but these hardworking Wildcat and Lady Wildcat athletes. Let's keep that momentum going into the streaming season. Help us share these feeds and make sure to like and follow us. Let's go Wildcats. Hey guys, let's not forget that select SWL live streams will be seen on our Redline Media Lights YouTube channel this season. Watch on your big screen from the comfort of your home with a smart TV and the YouTube app. Just a few advantages over Facebook like pausing and rewinding live events. Make sure to click that subscribe button to our Redline Media Lights YouTube channel. Let's go Wildcats. Redline, connect the world. Let's all go and subscribe to Summersville's own Austin Bradley's College Basketball Insider channel on YouTube. Austin and his passion and knowledge of college basketball shine through on this channel week in and week out. Speaking of week in and week out, weekly polls every week, bracket breakdowns, and much more analysis from Austin can be seen and even discussed on this channel by commenting with Austin on the chat feature each week. CBI with Austin Bradley. It is never too late to become a sponsor here with us at Summersville Wildcats Live. When you sponsor, you aren't just supporting the people who support Summersville Athletics. You're supporting these young men and women who work so hard and represent the Wildcats in a manner that we can all be proud of. If you have questions about becoming a sponsor, please feel free to contact us on Facebook and reach out to owner-operator Andy Earls at 501-413-9715. Let's go Wildcats. We want to say thank you to all of our sponsors from all of us at Summersville Wildcats Live. And we want to say thanks to you for sticking with us through this sponsor video. Hey, your live production, it'll be right back shortly. We want to say thank you to... All right, everybody, we are back for the second half of basketball here, 31-26 in favor of the Summersville Wildcats with about 30 seconds left in the halftime period. As both teams take the floor, they're going to wipe that 30 seconds off the clock, and we're going to go ahead and get it started. Uh, Summersville, uh, I mean, I, I would say cause Summersville for the most part controlled uh, the game in the first half. They had a couple uh, pointless turnovers that they're going to have to turn around, but uh, we'll see. And with that, I'll give it back to you. Right on, man. I agree with everything you said there, though. Bean gets it into Luna, turnaround jump shot. No good. Frisco pulls it down. Bushman up to Keeling on the left, back to Bushman. Right corner for Tristan Duncan. I watched him hit a few in the warm-ups there. Quick shot by Keeling is up and good for two. And Cotter will bring it back up for, nope, he'll give it up to Fryman to bring it up for Bakersfield. Right wing, Bushman out on him into Lashley, back up. Fryman, shot fake, drives, kicks it out. Bean, he'll explode to the basket. 
Lashley from the free throw line, off the glass. Bank is open because that is good. 33-28. Guys, if you're watching, go ahead and give us a comment on here. Let us know who you're rooting for. Let us know where you're watching from. We'll get you called out here. Three-point, no good. And we'll get you called out here so uh, everybody knows you're watching. Cotter, nice handles by him. Lost control, but he kept enough. Three-point, no good. Keeling explodes right back at him. He comes in, up, off the glass, no good. He'll be fouled, and he will shoot two. Nice explosiveness by him. Holy cow, yeah, he was – he beat everybody. And he was smart. He right there at the end took that little step to go to the side of Luna, who would set up to take a charge. First one is good. Cameraman tonight is Carson Boyer, my nephew, Austin's cousin. Ooh, missed. Oh, Greer almost had that one. It gets knocked away to Fryman, but big thank you to Carson coming up and doing this. Bean. My chair just fake. broke. Ooh, he got away with the travel. Layup is good for Lashley, did it? I heard something pop. Bushman now. Sorry, Ron Keeling. Hurst was alerting me there. <laughs> See, I heard. I thought it was his voice. Now to Duncan. He'll bring it around back to Keeling. He looks to attack. Kicks it over Prisco. Bushman back to Prisco. Nice defense here by Bakersfield. Good ball movement by Summersville. Duncan goes up. Loses his handle. Power dribbles. Goes right back up at it and scores two more. Fryman will come back for Bakersfield. Cotter dumps it off to Lashley. Fryman fakes a three, drives, pulls up, no good off the side of the backboard. Garen Greer will get it to Prisco, and he'll bring it up left side down to Duncan. He'll shoot a quick three from the corner, no good. That's typically pulled his down, shot. Yeah, pulled down there, put back by Garen Greer. Nice job by him. Yeah, typically he gets that, and especially when it's quick like that. Largest lead of the game, or ties the largest lead of the game. Yeah. I'm sorry. Bean gets it out to Fryman now on the right wing. He'll bring it around. Back down in the corner to Bean. And he'll bring it up. Drives back towards the basket. Fryman in the corner, right corner. Cross court pass Luna. Bean now. Back to Fryman. Cotter cuts through the middle. Keeling just about stripped it away there. Yep. Bean. Over to Cotter. Bushman out on him. Now Luna in the corner. Gets it into Fryman. Nice ball movement here by Bakersfield. Fryman will go up, rolls around, no good. Pulled down by Keeling. Good defensive job error for Summersville as well. And Keeling gives it over to Duncan. Back up to Keeling, right corner. High right corner. Into Garen Greer now. Greer back out. Duncan will shoot another three, right wing three. No good. Nice job by Andrew Bushman to snake in there. And I believe he landed. Yep, he did. Landed on the out of bounds line. But he snaked in there just perfectly, got up, got that rebound. And number 23 is checked in. That is Tally, along with number 32, Luna, Robbie Luna. Robbie and Trace are twins, 34 and 32. Ball slapped out of bounds by Garen Greer. It will be Bakersfield ball with Robbie Luna inbounding. He gets it up top to Bean. Bean looks to drive up, dishes off, can't hang on to it. Comes down and rolls, but I believe he is okay. There's a nice pass over to Tally, but Tally couldn't quite hang on to it. Prisco will inbound for Somersville. Duncan up the middle. Keeling on the left, brings it back around up top. Bushman. Over to Prisco. Now down to Duncan in the corner. Down to Keeling. Out of bounds. Bad pass right there. And Robbie Luna slaps it out of bounds.
Killing, high right wing. Gives it up to Bushman, who'll bring around up top. Killing now swings it down to Duncan and to Greer. He'll power up. He'll be fouled on the. Sh oh, we're going to have an offensive foul there charge as Fryman stepped up, and that's called on Garen Greer. That is number two on him. But if, I mean, you saw Garen there. The call, the call was made. He slumps his shoulders. He turns around and starts walking down the floor. Go make up for it. <laughs> yeah. You know? The call was the call regardless of whether you agree with it or not. Yep. Fryman dunking out on him, gives it up to Collins. Cotter now. Did he carry that? Yeah. Thought so. Cotter kicks it out. Now it goes into Tally, into Fryman. He'll turn around. No good. Gets his own rebound. Put back. No good. Garen Greer's going to get it, and that's going to get a foul on Tally. And you see frustration there by Fryman on not being able to finish that. Thirty-eight thirty, two minutes fifty-three seconds left in this third quarter. Summersville with the lead. Killing gets it down to Duncan, back up to Bushman. Nice pass into Duncan, has it stripped away. And stolen away by Killing. No look pass to Duncan. He'll go up, finishes at the basket for two. Largest lead of the night, 10 points by Summersville. Ball's worked down to Fryman. Tries to get it through, can't get it through. Prisco with it. He's going to come up for a right hand layup. No good. Man, he slapped the backboard way too hard. It's just one of those deals where we've talked about in the past just shoot the layup. Gonna have a foul on Bushman. And there you saw Prisco slap the hands. I mean, it is what it is. It sucks. You obviously, you want to convert that, but. Well, oh, nice job by Tristan Duncan to get a hand on that ball. Now it's a turnover in favor of Summersville. Well, that's a layup there. I mean, I know you can get up and all that, but just shoot, shoot the layup. Lay it up off the glass. Prisco, dump it into Duncan. Has it stripped away by Collins. Duncan wanted the foul there, didn't get it. Cotter will be fouled by Prisco. I'm not sure there was a foul there, but Prisco kind of, he gave himself away in that situation because yeah. of the way that he, the way that he kind of fell, I guess, it yeah. looked. It's going to be a shooting foul. Yeah, I don't know. Cotter's first one is good. As I mentioned earlier, kid's a solid shot, so. Second one for Cotter is good as well. 40-32. Bushman back out to Keeling. Bushman in the right corner now, guarded by Collins. He'll bring it back out. Gives it up to Keeling up top. Keeling kicks it over Prisco, left corner. Bushman up top. Garen Greer and I with the ball at the free throw. He'll give it up. Bushman for three, no good. Rebound fought for by Summersville. Blocked from behind is Keeling by Bean. And you've seen Keeling and Duncan both fighting for that rebound. Had one of them backed off, had it been rebound Summersville. Now rebound Gavin Keeling. He'll fly back up. Off the glass, no good. He was out of control. I mean, like I said, I mean, for the most part, Summersville has controlled this game. But there have been periods where they have just been really, really, really sloppy with the basketball. Yeah. Cotter kicks it up to Luna. Now Bean with it. See, Bean carries the ball horrible. And I'm not meaning that in a negative way. He just does. He Every time he comes up and around, up and around. Still right there by Summersville. Guys, you'll see there if you're watching any of the comments, FIBA, DNT. Oh, my goodness. 
makes a comment about clicking on a link. Do not click on that link. That is a scammer. Um, do not click on it. Fila DNTA. Here with three seconds, too. No good. They get the rebound. Luna gets it up. Oh, they're going to call a foul right there on Tristan Duncan. Oh, and, and Coach, Coach Harrell is on him. That sends Luna to the line. That is Trace Luna. Sends him to the line for two. Ten-point lead here. First one is good for Luna. Nine-point lead. What, do you have to stay on, stay on the floor? Yeah. Second one is good. Eight-point ball game now. On a silly foul, number three for Tristan Duncan, and that's why you've seen Coach Harrell so, so upset. I've got a feeling here in about five seconds he's going to hear about it again. So, uh, yeah. I'd say you're right. Did uh, Alton end up winning? I would guess. I, did, I haven't seen, like, an official final score or anything, but right. I, I would assume. There you see your Summersville cheerleaders out there. Uh, I am going to say one more time, guys, there is – a couple of comments on here that tell you to click on the link for the for the live stream. Not sure why you would click off our live stream to try to go to somebody else, but that is a scammer. We've reported them, had them reported. Uh, do not click on those links. Eight point ball game here, fourth quarter. As we get ready to start off here, it will be Summersville ball. As I mentioned earlier, Summersville with the eight-point lead. Keeling gets it into Duncan. One dribble pull up, no good, slapped around. Tally brings it down to Fryman. Alton wins 96-57. 96-57. Gra congratulations, Alton Comets. Nice shot floater right there by Bean. Doesn't fall. Prisco pulls it down, and he's going to get it out to Keeling. Ahead. Misses Greer, and Cotter chases it down, but Greer gets on the floor for it. Jump ball. We'll give it to Bakersfield. Uh, it was a good hustle by Garen Greer. Sloppy pass by uh, by Gavin Keeling. That's a pit pat, is what that is right there. Foul on uh, Josh Prisco. Cotter looks to get it in to Luna. Now back to Cotter. Seven minutes, 20 seconds left. Fryman, right wing, looks to drive, kicks it out. Bean will shoot a three. It's good. Now we have a five-point ball game. Andrew Bushman will bring it up for Summersville. Summersville better get their heads in the game. That's not a shot you want to take whenever you got a team chipping away at you. And Cotter will bring it back up. To Luna. Cotter will shoot that all day long. No good. Pulled in by Prisco. He'll give it up to Gavin Keeling. Now to Bushman. Back up. Left corner here for Josh Prisco. Six minutes, 25 seconds left. Fourth quarter. Oh, that kick, kick ball. ball violation. Tried to sneak the pass through to Tristan Duncan, kicked the ball, and they just about didn't call it. Summersville needs a score here. If I was Doug Swan, I wouldn't go get that ball. Luna would go get it. He roll it or something? He threw it. Duncan goes to the line for two.
First one for him is good. Uh, there at the back of the rim on the box, the metal box, that piece mm -hmm. is almost hanging loose. You see it? Yeah. Second one is good as well, 44-37, seven-point ball game. Still makes for a nice sound. Yeah. Bean now. Fryman. Fryman's on the left wing, guarded by Duncan. Gets it over to Luna. Now Bean again up top. Duncan out on him. Try to feed the ball into Luna, can't get it to him. Josh Prisco slaps it away to Tristan Duncan, and Josh will bring it back for Somersville. Dumps into Duncan. He goes up, fouled, and he'll go back to the line for two. Tally with the foul there. First one for Duncan is good again, 45-37. Lashley comes back in. Now you'll see Trey Fisk and Garen Greer will take a seat. Duncan's second one is good again. Nine-point game here. Cotter now swings it over to Luna, back to Cotter. Bushman out on him. Fryman tries to bulldoze in, gets a foul. I believe on Gavin Keeling. Yep, that will be on Gavin Keeling. That's only going to be his first. First one, oh, rolls around oh and my. out. It doesn't get any closer to that without making it for Fryman. I've seen Keeling, I've seen uh, Duncan, I've seen Frisco all take charges, and right there is the exact opportunity to do it. I mean, the kid lowered his head, lowered his shoulders, and tried to bulldoze in. But instead, we got whistled for the foul. Nice rebound, Tristan Duncan. Keeling bring it back up. Is it really the fourth quarter? Yeah. Stolen ahead, uh, Fryman. Right hand layup off the glass is good. And we have a timeout by Bakersfield here. Seven-point ball game with five minutes, ten seconds left in the game. Full timeout. I heard somebody over there yell rebound. Not sure who it was, but... I'd like to say take care of the ball. Way too many turnovers. Seven point ball game here as uh, timeout starts to expire. Uh, Somerville has three players. If you really think about it, three boys right now that are on the court that uh, have both or have all three recently suffered a loss, a great loss in their life. And uh, Grant, two grandpas, uh, two area men, great guys. At every uh, Craig was at every ball game, and Tom was super involved with with his kids, other people's kids, guys my age. You know, Tom and Debbie, and then Debbie and Craig. Uh, our prayers with both families. And the loss of two great men, and we're going to get started back here. Keeling brings it up, blows by Bean, kicks it over to Duncan. He'll dribble around, dribbles in, goes up, and he's going to be fouled. Nice job by him. Very strong play to try to get in there, and he'll shoot two more. He's been very aggressive here in the second half. Yep. Which, granted, I mean, he wasn't in the game a lot of the first half because he got into early foul trouble, but. He goes to the line here for the. Sixth or the fifth and sixth time. This is the first one there, but fifth and sixth time in like two minutes off the clock. You all right? Yeah. Misses his first. Robbie Luna's in now, along with his twin brother Trace. 
Second one is good. 47-39, just under five minutes. Fryman gets it into Luna, back out. He'll get it over to Cotter, killing on Cotter, killing a very tough defender. Three point by Bean is good. That was a nice shot by Bean. And then he's got to throw the stupid three up in there. I hate he's, that. He's done that on all three. I don't mind it, honestly. I don't like it. But I guess maybe that's a difference in new style and I don't want to say old style because you're not old, was. but 90s is old, bud. Ball ahead to Duncan. He'll power up for two right there. Big shot by him. Eight point ball game again. And Bean comes back. Oh, I thought he was going to pull up quick there. Luna now. Bean will pull up there. He's filling it in and out. No good. Rebound by Duncan. And Bakersfield coach was not happy with that shot. Bushman now being guarded by Bean. Backdoor cut. Prisco up off the glass is good. And there she is, Devlin Hawkins says, let's go Wildcats. Come on, boys. Thank you, Debbie. We've been waiting for that all night. We miss you tremendously, and like we said, we love you, and we're praying for you guys. And like that, your grandson just got a rebound. Fist pulls it down, and Bushman will bring it up for Summersville. <laughs> nice job by Coach Harrell there. Bushman. <laughs> Bushman loses it, and just as he's grabbing possession of it, he calls a timeout. Bakersfield is saying that he didn't have possession of it, but the call's been made. Just as he grabbed possession of it, it was going to be out of bounds. I can. I think as far as repping goes, I know Clint well enough to see he's had just about enough of Bakersfield's. Uh, uh, don't know what we want to call it, complaining, arguing, or whatever. Well, it's, I mean, it's the well, fans. It's well, yeah, it's not just – I'm not saying coaching players, but there's been talk back from, from a lot of the players. You've heard a lot of the fans yelling. And Clint lo looks to be getting very aggravated. Leanna Fisk Bryson says, Go Wildcats. Tristan, Andrew, and Trey are playing for grandpas in heaven tonight. Three boys with heavy hearts right now. That they've all been playing very well, uh, Leanna. <laughs> As we get ready to get started back here, Somerville awaits the Bakersfield Lions, and here they come now. Devlin says, thanks, Alan. I'll be back. Love my Wildcats and my community. Can't wait, Devlin. Cannot wait. And Gavin Killing gets the ball. Bean out on him. <laughs> Killing's handles are on point right now. And to Fisk. Luna about slaps it away. Fisk gets it back to Bushman now. Problem Cotter. with that, you need to have that in tight. Yeah. You're, you're, he held it out too far. Oh, wow. Nice still there by Luna. Throws it ahead to Bean. Killing races after it along with Bean. It's going to be out of bounds. Summersville ball. And Bakersfield fans are not happy. Summersville fans are extremely happy. Sometimes I think they fuel each other. Well, both sides erupted at the same time. And, you know, of course, both are opposite. Whoa. That's a travel. Yeah. You got to call a foul or a travel right there. You can't. Well, when Killing went to the floor, he still had his dribble, but as soon as he hit, he rolled with it. That's the travel in it. Or you could add the foul whenever the kid comes flying in. So jump ball goes back to Summersville now. Under three minutes, 10-point ball game, Summersville leads. Ahead and out of Bushman on the left wing. Stutter step for him. He'll pull it back out. Gets it to Killing. Say Bean's uh, all over him with his hands. Killing trying to slap it away. Backdoor cut. Up off the glass is good for Bushman. 12-point lead. Two minutes, 35 seconds. Cotter comes back the other way. Now over to back up to Cotter. 4-3, short, no good. Nice rebound there by Gavin oh. Killing. Cotter bites it. Trey ran him over is what Did happened he? right there. I mean, absolutely mowed <laughs> him down. Prisco, right, wing, or right corner. He'll pull it around back up. As we approach two minutes here. Nice crossover by Prisco yeah, right there. Yeah, low and quick. Ryan Havens, thanks for watching, buddy. You're my prayers, my man. You and Becky and the girls. Miss seeing Elizabeth tonight. Bushman will take it. Tells Duncan, 
There he goes. He gets Duncan moved over. He'll kick it over to him in the corner. Down into Keeling. Back out. Duncan will shoot a three. No good. Cotter with the rebound. Minute 45 left. 12-point ball game. Bean explodes back. Kicks it out. Fryman loses it. Trey Fist down to Prisco. And you see Gavin Keeling there say, hey, slow up. It's a costly turnover there for Bakersfield. Yep. Bean comes out. They needed a point like they need oxygen uh, right there on that possession. Ooh. Huge push by Luna, no call. Going to be a tie up there is what they're going to call, but I mean. Shoving. Josh Prisco went to the basket and when he went up, I mean two hands shoves him out of bounds, no call. Tristan will sit for what I assume will be the rest of the night, barring a comeback here in the next few seconds. Bean explodes to the basket, loses his handle on it. Keeling comes up with it. Double he double dribbled. dribbled. What he travel. did? Yep. Oh, a travel. Well, he double dribbled too. Him and Bean's got some sort of little rivalry going. You see Bean start laughing and said something to him. Talking back and forth. Yeah. That's the stuff I'm okay with. The little, the chip. The chirping and the, the talking back and forth like that, yeah. I'm, I'm cool with that. But when you're going up, throwing up your hands a three, you know, for one, you're losing, you know. Right, right. I don't like it when you're losing. Like, if you're down by 30 and you run down the floor like you just hit a game winner in the NBA Finals, you know, like, yeah. I don't I don't like that. I don't like it when you're losing by one. But First one by Fryman's good. Well, I mean, like you talk about the other night, you think about the other night at Winona whenever Alton was playing bunker and Brandon DeWolf, who was absolutely torching the net, right. you know. Like, I'm okay with that. Like, he, he threw it up a couple times. Bushman nice pass by Keeling. It's good. Yes, beautiful pass. Yeah, but whenever you're on fire like he is and you're winning, dribbles it off the leg of Bushman. Keeling gives it up to Bushman. He's going to go in left hand. It's good for him. He's got like six or eight points here in the last 30 seconds. 58-43, 15-point lead. Bean gives it up. Collins shoots a three. No good. Pull down. We're going to have a foul here. I believe it's going to be on Fryman. It is on Fryman. That will be his second. We are now 38.4 seconds, 58-43, 15-point ball game. Keeling to get it over to Prisco. Pressure here by Bakersfield. Prisco loses it. Cotter comes up. Shoots a three. No good. Pulled down by Summersville. Oh. Did that hit him in the face? <laughs> yeah. Josh Prisco went to save the ball and bounced it off Bean's forehead. Uh, as you see, Bean helped Keeling up there. See, they've, they've been talking back and forth with each other, but then as soon as he got up, he turned around and helped him up. Devlin says, that a boy, double zero. Devlin, he's been on fire. He has been for the last few weeks. You know that. Bean looks to drive. He's going to be bodied by Andrew. 17.7 .7 seconds left. 58-43. Summersville with the lead. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one here. Yep. Bean's first one is good. Coming off a game, they, they scored 91. Summersville's going to score 58, I mean, unless they score here on this possession for uh, off of a foul or for whatever reason. Well, there's been uh, on both ends. I mean, but Bakersfield's come, and they've played a game, and they've played defense well and everything like that, rebounded the ball well. So They might foul. I started to say that kind of looked like they were going to foul there. Fouled Gavin Killing, sending him to the line for a one-and-one. 14.5 seconds left. They burn 3.2 off the clock. This will be a one on one. Summersville pulls back all rebounders. Keeling's first one is good. 59 45. I feel like it? Summersville shot free throws better tonight. That's just because of who shot. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, second one is up and it's good. Uh, one more time, want to give a shout out to uh, my nephew, Austin's cousin, Carson Boyer, for running the camera for us. A lot of these nights that we're at Summersville, he's, he's our cameraman. We couldn't do it without him. 
So big thank you to him. Tryman for three. No good. Pulled down by Greer. And that's going to do it. I thought Greer was going to shoot that. <laughs> Could be Summersville ball. Bunk Bakersfield oh, he's ball. Calling off Baker or off Summersville, so Bakersfield ball. But that's going to do it. I mean, 15 point game here. He hits this at the 12. So 12 point game. 48 60. Summersville will take the victory in boys and girls varsity. Devlin said, the boys told me today they were going to play hard tonight. They did. Proud Wildcat man. Yes, they did. They played very hard tonight. Uh, very proud of all those boys, especially the three that have, you know, got a lot of stuff going on. But that's a game for Summersville. Another win. What does that make us? 19 and four. I say 19 and four is what I thought too. So 19 and four, good record as we play, is it Bunker next? Bunker on Friday, a huge game. Summersville will play Bunker at Bunker, huge game for the conference. Uh, hope to see you guys there, but we're gonna go ahead and sign, out, sign will, out for the night, what? I will remind you before we sign off, I said it earlier, uh, we say it's a huge game. A Bunker win gives Bunker sole possession of the regular season championship for the Big Springs Conference. A Summersville win creates a three-way tie, giving Summersville, Alton, and Bunker, all three, a share of the Big Springs Championship. So yeah. it is a, it is very important as far as that goes. Yep. Dustin Harrell says, good game, boys. Thanks, Dustin. Sorry Austin gave you such a hard time, my man. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, we're going to sign off here, though, and then uh, when we come back, is it next week our next home game? Yes, next Monday. No, next. Thursday we have a, a girls' home game. Okay, we'll be, we'll be back next Thursday, or this Thursday for the girls' home game. Guys, have a good week. <laughs>